Over the last 4,000 days in this world, I've built three towns thousands of blocks apart from each other, crammed with factories, production lines and transportation, all connected by train lines. And we're very close to moving on to our next big project, which is all going to revolve around food and air travel. But before we can do that, we do still have a few bits we need to finish around here, as I still need to add transportation lines from this side of the dock and have them drop off somewhere over there. And of course, I'm going to need to create somewhere for all the food from the next district to actually get delivered to. That being said, we're not going to do any of that today. Or today we go to the ocean. As I figured it's about time we made a guardian farm so I can get my grubby little mitts on some prismarine and more importantly for the next phase, sea lanterns. And apologies if I sound a little bit weird today. I'm just recovering from a cold after a week off. Why does that always happen? You have a week on holiday and then when you get back, you get ill. But anyway, we need to prep for today. So if we're going to be making a guardian farm, there's a few things I do know about the mechanics of guardian farms thanks to this amazing farm by ENX04. But we're not going to be building that farm today. We've got create. So we're going to get creative with it. And I'm hoping what we can do is have some kind of an oil rig or something out there. And then we'll have a tanker that comes in and drops everything off and goes back and so on and it should all be wonderful and lovely, if I can get it to work. But the first step for today is going to be to find an ocean monument to use. And if I recall correctly from our previous exploration missions, I'm fairly sure there's actually one pretty much directly south. But I don't think this is the one I was looking for, as we appear to be struggling to load some new chunks here. But this is an ocean monument. It has a boat stuck in the side of it, but this should do the trick nicely. Question is, is there any land around here I can set down on? Oh, there's a bit there, actually. That'll do. So if we have a look on our map, where is that ocean monument in relation to things? So that's down here. And yep, that's pretty much directly south, not too far away. I reckon we can make that work. The first thing I'm going to need to do, though, is to clear out the Elder Guardians, the big boys in there that are going to make it hard for me to break blocks. But I didn't come prepared for that whatsoever. So let's quickly go home and grab a few bits and bobs. So I'm no stranger to Guardian Farms. I've built a few in the past. In fact, the very first big build I ever did in Minecraft was conversion of a Guardian Farm. Look at that look, doesn't it look shiny? And what I've learned is that potions of invisibility are going to be my friends. So the first thing we're going to do is make a whole bunch of those. And for that, we're going to need fermented spider eyes, which hopefully we can make. We've got a few eyes here. We're going to need blaze rods for fuel. We're going to need some nether wart, which might be a problem. I don't think I've actually got any. Unless there's any hiding around here, that'll be a no. Although in saying that, we do, of course, have a nether wart farm somewhere around here in one of these buildings. This one, I think. So let's steal some of that. And then we're going to need a whole load of glass bottles. Probably not that many, but that'll do. And I'm going to need some sugar and some brown mushrooms. Ah, sugar could be a problem. Brown mushrooms, though, we've got plenty of those. So let's quickly go scavenge some sugar cane just so we've got enough. It's amazing how many of the basic farms I still don't have yet, but then I would normally get sugar cane for rockets, right? And we're using a jetpack, so I suppose that makes sense. And now if we do this, we should get fermented spider eyes. And the last thing I need is some golden carrots. But we should just be able to craft up some of those. And it looks like I'm going to need a couple of brewing stands as well. And I think we'll just do the brewing over here because, well, we've got water down here. So that's going to make things much easier. And then let's get brewing, I guess. So I've got 12 eight-minute potions. That should be more than enough. But we could probably also do with a few water-breathing potions too. So let's get some of those on the go. We're loaded up on potions. I've got my waystone. Let's go clear out this monument. So if we take everything off, apart from our jetpack, so we can still move around quickly. And then get our sword, drink some potions. Hopefully, we won't get seen. But there's only one way to find out. Time to play some epic 80s music, I guess. Let's go. Oh, I think I ate a puffer fish. But more importantly, all the big boys are dead now, so we can actually start making plans. Now, to make this farm, the first thing we need to do is mark off an area, and I need to make sure that I'm constantly invisible and water breathing, otherwise bad things are going to happen. And in regards to where we're actually putting things in this farm, this is all from Ian XO4's Guardian Farm tutorial, so if you want to know more details about why I'm doing certain things in certain ways here, then go watch his video, I'll link to it in the description. It's a great vanilla Guardian Farm, I'm invisible, so this doesn't really work, does it? But it is a great vanilla Guardian Farm, farm and it's what we're going to be basing this off of so we found the corner of that chunk what i'm going to do now is fly over two chunks and put another lily pad there and one across in the next chunk and this area here way up there somewhere is where our afk spot's going to be and at this point i'm already going to divert from ian's design because well what he does is he collects all the guardians sends them into the nether and then they come up there and so on but i just want the drops i don't really want the xp plus because we're playing with create i want to make a create based farm so what we need to do is go Go this way. We're going to make a big square on the surface here, which is going to be essentially our catchment area. 
Now, the first thing I need to do is to build up a couple of walls here on either side. And the way this farm's going to work is that we're going to have a load of soul sand down the bottom here. That's going to push the guardians into this chamber. And then what I'm going to do is use encased fans along the back wall here. That's going to blow the guardians over to this side. And then on this side, we're going to destroy them with drills. At least that's the plan. I'm hoping it's going to work. So if we stick a bunch of chain drives on the back of these and rotate one here at the end to go up, because we do, of course, need to create power for these. And if I'm going to be trying to make this look like an oil rig, which is going to be very interesting, considering we've got a giant square at the seed level, but yep, we'll figure it out. But we'll have a power station up top, and that's what's actually going to power the whole system. So hopefully that should work for getting rid of the Guardians, but we are, of course, going to need to collect their drops as well. And for that... I think we're probably going to use the old backpack trick again because, well, these drops are going to be going everywhere. But if we have a backpack with a magnet upgrade, we can pull everything out. And one other issue we're going to have is when the Guardians get pushed up with the Soul Sand, they're basically going to go flying at the top here. So we're probably going to need a layer of glass or something over the top as well. But I didn't bring any of that with me, so let's go grab some. Hopefully that's going to stop all the guardians flying out the top here. But what we need to do now is to get down all the soul sand. So if we get rid of this, we should just be able to line this on top of the monument here. And that should give us loads of space for them to spawn and hopefully get pushed into our little trap. Well, that's a whole lot of bubbles and not very many frames left. So if we go up here now, though. Yep, okay, they're getting trapped on the surface. This is good. But to test how effective it really is, we need to go to the AFK spot. So let's just dump a whole bunch of scaffolding here for now. So this should be the right spot. If we go down and have a look, do we have loads of guardians in here? Whoa, look at that. Oh, that's amazing. And we've got some sharks as well. But if we were pushing those over into the drills, they'd just keep respawning. Oh, this is going to work a treat. Wonderful stuff. But I think I'm going to turn down mob sounds for now because this is going to get very annoying otherwise. Now they won't be making a racket while we figure everything else out. Although I wonder if I waypoint away and then waypoint back. There we go. We can clear it nice and easily. So what I want to do now, I think, is potentially try and work out how this oil rig is going to go. And we're going to need power coming out there. So maybe if we were to put legs in around here somewhere. I think height-wise that should work okay if we would then have a platform on the top here, which is going to sort of stick out. Yeah, this could work nicely. So I'm just going to get the core shape of the platform in. We'll just use these blocks for now just so we can see what we're working with. And then hopefully we can actually get some power involved. And once we've got the power going, we can actually sort out everything else. And, well, technically by that point, the farm will be working. And I'm very much looking forward to that. I've got to stop going into F5. It doesn't work when I'm invisible. Silly beardy. Right, let's get building. So I have a basic frame in now. It should work quite well. I think height-wise, it's not looking too bad. I think that probably looks about right. I still need to connect to the legs to the sea floor, but we'll do that later. For now, what I want to try and do is figure out power. And for that, we're going to need to actually put it in the platform and then build some kind of a power plant up here, I guess. The thing is, I don't really know much about anything about oil rigs. I've never really been on one, and I've barely even seen pictures of them. So I'm going to jump on Google and get a little bit of inspiration, and hopefully we can make something that looks at least a little bit like an oil rig, maybe. So I've done a bit of research, I've looked at some pictures, I even watched a lovely video of a man giving a tour of an oil rig. That wasn't particularly helpful, but he was having a wonderful time, and so was I. But the main thing I learned is cranes. Lots and lots of cranes. Oil rigs tend to have cranes everywhere. They also tend to have a helipad, so that's going to be interesting. And other than that, we do need the big drill itself. So I think we're going to get that in first. So we will build on that and get the big drill up there eventually, of course. But the next thing I learned was grating. Lots and lots of grating. So we'll get this in next. Well, that's the mesh platform in. But before we start working out where things like the helipad and that are going to go, I really do want to get this power sorted. Now, for this power station, I think I'm actually going to do a sort of full-size boiler thing. We probably won't put all the steam engines on that we need, but I think it's just going to look a bit better scale-wise. And to be honest, we do have a whole lot of drills and a whole lot of fans down there that we want running at max speed. So I guess having a giant one here isn't going to be a bad thing. So I'm thinking six steam engines should be more than enough. Then we'll just connect those with a belt. But now I need to solve the water situation. Luckily, we're in the middle of an ocean, so that shouldn't be too much of an issue. And I think I want to have two different water connections. I want to have one that's powered by a water wheel so it's constantly got at least a little bit of water because this power station is going to be starting and stopping quite a lot so for this one here i'm just going to put in a water wheel just like that and to keep the water in place we'll just use some copycat panels and then for the pipe i think if we were to go over here we can just strap it to this leg and then have it go all the way down into the ocean so if we chuck a bucket of water there and rotate that round that's probably not going fast enough is it not to worry, let's try something else. So if we do that, 
stick a speed controller in there. Turn it up to 128. Hopefully that'll be enough. Then if we just move where this pump is. So put it down a block. Then hopefully we can set that to vertical. Okay, overstressed. Let's try 64. Hopefully that's going to be enough to bring up some water. Yep, there we go. Look at that, beautiful. So at least the power plant's never going to run out of water. So now what I want to do is to get this and speed that up to maximum. And when it comes to actually running this power plant, I don't think we need to worry about all of these. We're going to be putting blaze cakes in, so maybe just like five of them. That should be more than enough. And we'll connect that to this depot and then just stick him there. Is that going to be close enough? Maybe not. So let's rethink this and just put it a little bit further this way. So let's link that up again. Stick him there and give him a cog. Now this power here, what I need to do is get it connected down to here. So let's just see where this comes out up the top here. Okay, we can work with that. Potentially just with a couple of chain drives and overstressed. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Because now in theory, when we come up here and we want to run the farm and we chuck a blaze cake in there, it should have enough power to then run the system. At least that's the hope. Maybe we should grab a couple of blaze cakes and find out. And luckily we've got 32,000 of them. Let's see if I give one of them a thing. Yep, okay, that's definitely definitely enough to run this. The question is, can it also run the other side where the drills are? Let's find out. Wait a minute. They're sucking, not blowing at the moment. But I guess we're about to solve that by putting in a gearbox there anyway. Excellent. Then if we stick another gearbox there, make that vertical. And now the drills are running, things are dying, but there's a whale stuck in my tank. I didn't think about the whales. But is that really a problem? I honestly don't really know what to do about that. If anyone has any ideas, please do let me know in the comments. How do I get whales out of my guardian farm? But the good news is it turns out just one of these is enough to power the entire farm. So I'm actually going to set this guy to only feed one, and that way we're not going to be using up anywhere near as many blaze cakes. So if we stick a drawer here and load it up, put a funnel on the side, and... Ah. Ah, yes, of course. I didn't think about that. This thing's not going to put another blaze cake in until it's run out. So we actually need at least two of these going. So hopefully we should be okay now. It should keep going, but we'll check on it in a little while. But I guess now we've got the power sorted, we're going to be getting drops down there. So I should probably sort out a collection system and something to do with some backpacks, I guess. So the backpacks have a range of five, which means we're probably going to need two. So this placement should work. And then if we put a bunch of drawer trims around the back here, and then we'll just have these going directly into drawers. We'll put a slave on that side, a controller there, so it's all linked up. And we'll put in a few spruce drawers. I don't know exactly how many things we're going to get from this yet. I mean, we should just get the two drops from the Guardians, but it looks like we're going to be getting fish and whales and sharks and all sorts. So we'll just leave them open for now and see what the system wants to do. I just need to grab a couple of bags and some magnet upgrades to get this working now. So I've got two backpacks. They just have an advanced magnet upgrade on them. And if we stick these here and here, they should start collecting all the drops. And in theory, that means if we were to go here to our AFK point, in fact, I think I might just do that, the farm should now be in a completely working state. So let's jump into free cam and have a look. And it looks like the farm's working a treat, apart from the fact there's now a giant squid in there eating them. Is it eating them? I think it is, you know. But apart from that, we're getting a lot of kills, which is nice. We do have some that spawn outside the farm. Quite a lot, in fact. Jeez. But the good news is after running the farm for only a few minutes, look at that. We've got loads of resources coming in. Look how many fish we've got. Didn't need that fish farm after all. But this is good, despite the giant squid that are messing around in there. Oh, and we've got some guests on our rig already as well, I see. Off with you. And you, get off my rig. So with that done, the farm working, the power sorted, what we need to do is make this look a little bit more like an oil rig. And I think the first step in that is going to be to actually build the drilling rig itself. Well, for a first attempt, I think that's looking pretty good. I will just run with that for now, I guess. Because I do think once we build up everything else around the area, that's going to blend in quite nicely. It might need to be a little bit taller. But for now, we're looking good. Next up, I'm going to hide the power plant. I'm going to get this inside a building of some sorts. And to be honest, I should probably get some railings up along the outside as well. Otherwise, I'm going to keep falling off. It's happened more than once. I feel safer already. Now, for this first building, I think we're going to keep things quite simple. We're going to make it look all metallic-y and stuff using these stone pillars. And one thing I did notice from the tour video I watched is that everything is very, very cramped on these oil rigs. So we want to have lots of narrow spaces like this. We're going to have details over everything. And hopefully it's going to look very busy by the end of it. And we'll have a little sticky-out bit at the back here to contain the water wheel. So I've got that all boxed in, but I've also added a limestone bit on top here because there wasn't really enough space to sort of get all of this stuff hidden. And it looks 
looked a bit weird sticking out the top. But this should work okay. Let's just get a couple of windows in. Short while later, and I think that's coming along quite well from the outside. But the inside is still looking a little bit bare. So I think the first thing we need is a ladder to upstairs. And I think it makes sense just to use the catwalk up here because it is a little bit dangerous. And it's going to look a lot better with the catwalk when we put these rails on. Down here, we should probably also make it a little bit safer and just rail off the bits we don't need. And then we'll just get a few sort of random detaily bits in just to make it look more interesting in here. Get some brackets where necessary. Okay, I'd say that's looking pretty good in here. Nice and cluttered. I think we can do with a bit of texture on the outside though. So if we maybe mix in some of these andesite pillars, that could help break it up a little bit. And this side around here is looking a little bit bare. So I'm thinking maybe we can stick a ladder in. And then if we use some of the copycat panels and the andesite bars, I think that will make a nice little cage as well. We've done this in a few other places, and I think it works well. And then here, I think another ladder up to the main roof makes sense. Oh, we've got a dancing creeper. I should probably sort out some kind of light protection up here at some point. He's having a whale of a time, though. Look at him go. You enjoy yourself, buddy. So that's the oil tower and the first building on, but we've still got a long way to go. And I think the next thing I want to do is tackle a helipad. And I think I want to put that over this side, which means he's going to have to go. That didn't go as smoothly as I hoped. So, helipads. This is going to need to be quite large. So I think we're going to have it sticking out over the side here. So if we treat this bit here as a middle point, how big do we want this? So that maybe looks a little bit small. I think we can go a bit bigger than that. There we go. That looks like a much better size. Question is, can I get a nice big H on this and have it look balanced? Yep, that's going to work a treat. I just need to decide what to actually build it out of now. Maybe this eroded tuff would work quite nicely. So I think this could work, but I'm just going to put a border on here of the walkways yeah that's looking pretty cool just needs a few lights so if we take some of these and some of these then we've got ourselves a bunch of sea lanterns and if we use these buttons they should light up quite nicely in fact i think we'll alternate these some of them are red then we just need some stairs to get up onto the pad itself maybe a few safety railings on this side wouldn't be a bad idea either all right looking good and i don't really want to put railings up around the rest of this they're generally left quite blank just so i guess things don't get caught but that makes sense but what we need now is some support because this thing's just floating so what can we do here maybe just make use of some girders we can probably attach them onto the side here as well but it overhangs a lot more on this side so i guess we're gonna need more supports there we go i'd say that's looking much more structurally sound now and i guess the good thing about having a helipad here also means that when it comes to our afk spot it kind of makes sense just to put a small helicopter up there, right? So it appears I've accidentally solved the AFK problem as well. Apart from the fact I now need to build a helicopter. But first, let's get this platform finished. And I think the next thing we need is probably a crane of some sort. And I mean, we could build another custom crane over here, but I'm wondering... We do already have a crane, we even have a blueprint for it because we've got a couple on the dock and it's still kind of linked to the same area. So, I don't know, maybe we can actually get away with, well, not putting it there. But if we shuffle this about a bit, we can probably get it looking pretty good. Maybe we should sink it into the floor a little bit just so it's actually attached as well. And to be honest, I think that's actually going to work quite well. So let's grab a cannon. Put the schematic in and see what we need. So I've just chucked both my backpacks down there, rerun it, and this is the stuff we're still missing. So I think a quick trip back to base and we should be able to get this sorted pretty quickly. A few minutes later, I've got a shiny new backpack loaded up with everything we need and I've got the cannon here ready to go. And we've got gunpowder, so I guess... We just click this and get a brand new crane. And a few minutes later, we have a crane. I've just got to fill in all of these framed blocks, but that should only take a moment. And there we go. That's looking much better. The crane actually makes a huge difference to the platform. Looking very cool. But we've still got a whole bunch of space over here and a whole bunch of things we need to add because, well, an oil rig is basically somewhere where people tend to live. So we're going to need some kind of kitchen galley type thing. We're going to need some accommodation. And we're going to need like radio control tower type things as well because oil rigs are basically ships so although i do need to extend the legs down i don't need to extend them all the way to the sea floor because well that's just not how they work so i think we can cram a few buildings in here and we'll kind of decide their purpose afterwards i guess let's just get some stuff built up first so i quickly put together a bunch of cubes that will eventually become our buildings and then i got attacked by phantoms but seeing an opportunity i decided to unalive them all and i managed to collect myself 24 phantom membrane and that's going to come in very handy next episode i then added some windows some roofs and lights to the 
buildings just to tie them into the platform a little bit better. Added some girders for support and a few doors. And then I added some stairs that connect the bottom of the platform to the top. And overall, I really think that's helping to pull the platform together. But we've still got a few other things we need to do. I feel like we need a little bit of colour around here. And I'm wondering whether maybe we can make use of more of these pipes. Especially if we put brackets on these, I think it does help to tie it together a bit better. Oh yeah, look at that. Just a small pipe and it makes a huge difference. Whether it makes any sense on an oil rig or not, I don't know, but it looks cool. And maybe some pipes on the platform as well, just to make it look like it's all interlinked. I think that helps. And then maybe we can just stick some shafts on the side here, because we can. And I think if we attach these with a couple of brackets, it'll add a bit of detail, even though it doesn't really have a purpose. Gotta love shafts and brackets. Almost as good as girders. But yeah, just little bits like that I think really do help tie it together. But I think in this area here, I want to get a couple of storage tanks like these, but we don't actually have any at the moment, so we're going to need to go make some more. And we're generally just going to try and clutter this area up a little bit more, and then I think we're going to be done. And there's no need to ask about the interior of these buildings. I haven't quite decided what to do with them yet. So I've added some texture, some big water tank things over here. I've added some barrels around and just generally tried to sort of clutter up the area with ladders and things like that. And I think this platform's looking pretty good. And from out here, I'd say that's looking pretty much complete as well. But now we have another problem to deal with. The AFK platform. And I think I am going to go with a helicopter for that. I think it just makes sense. We'll just make some kind of small one, I guess. I don't really know how we're going to do this. But we're also going to need a way to be able to get up to the AFK platform. And for that, we're going to use a warp plate, which is one of these. How do we actually make it? Warp dust. Okay. Yep, fair enough. We can do that. But if we get a couple of these, we can just have one down here that we stand on and then it will instantly put us in the helicopter and then start up the farm and vice versa. And that way we don't need to have a big pile of scaffolding to get up there because our jetpacks just don't go high enough. I've also moved the waypoint in here because down the bottom on that platform, you can actually still get shot by the other guardians. And that's just not very fun. So let's make a couple of warp plates just to get us started. So we needed some of these and some amethyst. That gives us this warp dust. And then we just need some stone bricks and flint. Now, if we put one of these in the corner here of the power station and then get this thing, and then for the other one, let's just replace that block of scaffolding with that. Make sure we're at the right level. And then if we put a warp plate here, what I should be able to do is put that shard in there. And then hopefully that'll take us down. Look at that. And then put that one in there. And that should take us back up. Excellent. Now to build a helicopter. This is going to be interesting. I don't even know where to begin. Let's get rid of this scaffolding first. Horrible stuff, but very satisfying to knock down. So I'm thinking for this helicopter, we're probably going to want a lot of framed blocks. We need to figure out what colour we actually want to make it. And I've got an inventory full of absolute rubbish I don't really need. So let's go empty ourselves out at the base first, and then come up with some kind of a plan. I decided to build the helicopter out of a combination of light blue concrete, glass, and industrial iron. And it definitely didn't take me almost an hour to build, due to me constantly falling off and then having to teleport back up there, and getting attacked by phantoms. But I do now have a small helicopter up here. It's not the best thing I've ever built, but it does the job. And I can even get back inside and then walk back down to the bottom. Question is, what does it look like from down here? A mess. It looks like an absolute mess. It's looking a little bit better from back here, but yeah, I think it's safe to say helicopters are not something I'm good at. But it'll do the job, and you can tell how long I've been up there by how much stuff we've got down here. Now look, 23,000 of that, almost 10,000 fish. Jeez. Ow! Yeah, this is why I don't like hanging out down here. Very violent. But with that, I think I can call this Guardian Farm complete. We do still, of course, need to build a big boat to transport everything back to the mainland, but we'll save that for next episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last episode, I went to the middle of the ocean and built a Guardian Farm hidden inside an oil rig, and today we need to transport all of these resources back to the dockyard for processing in one of our empty warehouses. And that means I gotta build a tanker. Between episodes, I went AFK for about 30 minutes or so, and look at all the stuff we've got. That is just a crazy amount of fish and prismarine bits, and we even got a bit of squid ink and some bone meal too, somehow. It's actually quite mad how much we got just from a very short AFK session. I love this farm. I don't love the AFK helicopter, however, but whatever. Let's go build a tanker. And I have no idea where to even begin with this. So I've had a look at a few pictures of tankers, and they're pretty much all black and red. They kind of have a black top section, and then a red bit that pretty much sits underwater, and quite often a red deck as well. So with that in mind, I'm thinking maybe some red terracotta would work, and we've actually got a decent amount of that, which is nice. And because we've actually automated terracotta, we can get loads more of this if we need it, so that's not a problem. But the question is, what do I want to use for the black parts of the hull? Because I think the black stone itself might be a little bit too dark, so maybe we should go deep slates. Although the deep slate block itself is a little 
little bit too textured, so maybe there's something in here we can use as a base. Or even in the stone cutter, maybe? I mean, we could just use cut deep slate, I suppose. I mean, it's either got to be that or the eroded. Let's have a little look. I mean, to be honest, they barely look any different, do they? And I think for just marking out the shape, this will work. We can always add some texture and other bits later. So let's just make a bunch of this cut deep slates. And for the big old bit that sits at the back, I think limestone's going to make sense for us. I did not mean to break that. So we're also going to need some phantom tracks. And we've got a few there, but I think we've got quite a lot in our backpack. Yeah, we've got almost 2,000 in there, so that might be enough. But if not, we did kill a few phantoms last episode, so we can always make a whole bunch more. And then if we also grab ourselves a train station and some train casing... This should, hopefully, be all we need to get a start on this boat. And I think it's going to make sense to maybe build this over at this dock because, well, we just got a bit more space, really, haven't we? And a lot less guardians to kill us. So let's just dump a little bit of track down here for now. We don't need to actually worry about the full layout for the track. Stick a station on, go to create new train. And we'll just stick an invisible bogey there as a starting point. Now... How to make big boats. So I think it's going to make sense to maybe start with the underneath of the boats. And it's probably going to be a good few blocks underwater, I'd imagine. Let's just see if we can work out a rough sort of size here. So for size and shape, maybe something like that. I mean, maybe it should be a little bit longer, potentially. But then if we picture that over here at this dock, that probably is about the right sort of size, really, isn't it? But let's have a check. How long is this boat? So minus 841 to minus 896. So that's what, 45 blocks long? Wrong, sir. Wrong. And each of these sections is seven blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six of those is going to be 42 blocks. So, yeah, I reckon 45 is probably about right. Any bigger and the boat's just not really going to fit at the dock we've built, is it? So I guess the next step is to try and get the hull filled in. We'll work out the shape a little bit better. And hopefully when I bring you back in, this will resemble something a bit more akin to a ship as opposed to just a random frame in the middle of the ocean. But I don't make any promises. Well, we're making some progress. I think I've got the basic shape in. It's looking a little bit boxy still, but we'll smoothen all that out a bit later. For now, though, I think what I want to do is get the cab sort of area on the back here and maybe sort of get some pipes and stuff on top and just try and work out the actual scale of this and make sure it's going to work. And that means it's time to crack out the limestone. Scale-wise, I think something like that's going to work. We just need to get some windows in and, of course, lots and lots of detailing. And I don't really know how that's going to go. So we're probably going to time-lapse this bit. Let's slap on some music, shall we? I'm not gonna lie, I feel like that's come out a lot better than I expected it to. The profile's looking pretty good as well. We've got the fan thing at the back. We've even got the little bulge at the front. I mean, that should probably be a bit bigger, but I think that looks fine. But I have made good use of all the random create components I could find just to sort of jam up this deck. And I, to be honest, I really quite like the metal trapdoors. They just add a little touch, but they really work well. But not only that, I've actually done the inside of the ship as well. So in here, we've just got sort of a little corridor that'll go upstairs, which we'll look at in a minute. We've just got a few bits some components on this wall we've got a little bedroom here and we've got a small storeroom and if we go up to the top here this is actually going to be a train so we need to be able to control it so this is where our driver is going to sit and i've just jammed in loads of controls and machinery and redstone bits just to make it look like it's actually doing something useful and there's even a coffee cup look at that so with all of this as it should be i think we can probably actually convert this back into a train now so let's go down to this station we will assemble train oh Wait a minute, I haven't actually glued it together. Got it all glued together, assembled it into a train, and I've put in a little track here just so we can see if it actually works or not. And hopefully we've not left anything behind, but with a build this big and my track record, chances are we haven't glued something. So let's jump in the driver's seat and see how we go. Well, I can instantly see I've left a small part of the boat behind. 
And it looks like I've left some of the deck behind as well in the top left there. Look, we've got a little bit broken. So let's just pull back into the station, disassemble again, and just get those few missing bits stuck on. Well, I can confirm the ship works. It's all moving. We haven't left anything behind. But what I need to do now is to actually work out the placement because I need to align this ship so that when it comes into the dock, the turning looks quite natural, but also it doesn't do this and clip through the dockyard itself. So I'm going to spend a bit of time messing around with some phantom rails and see if we can't get this sorted. I imagine this is going to be a lot of trial and error. So I've been messing around quite a lot and it's not perfect, but you can see we can actually swing in now without hitting the dock and this will obviously be a lot slower once we get it sorted properly. I have also just about managed to get it to go forward and turn around here without clipping any of the dock. And if you imagine this is going to be happening, happening very, very slowly once it's actually automated, I think we can probably get away with it. And then it's just going to sail off into the distance and we just need to put in a couple of crossings where it crosses the line of the other boats. I think this should work quite nicely. And I really can't wait to get this thing going around. So I'm going to get lots and lots of phantom rail in and get all this sorted, I think. However, we do have a long way to go and I've only got one and a half thousand of them. So I think probably what we can actually do is if we take this line here and go directly towards the oil rig, this one over here, we can probably swoop it in so it just becomes a single line. Or in fact, maybe connecting this one over to there might be easier. I don't know. Either way, let's get placing some rail. About 20 minutes later, and I think I've got the loop in now. Hopefully this will work. I just basically need to go back and get the boats and take it on a test drive. Well, it all seems to work nicely. What I need to do now is line up some stations and actually put in the pickup and delivery bits. And I have put some storage interfaces on each side. In fact, that's what that block there indicates. That's where the interface is. It's just on the other side. So if I was to put a station about five blocks further forward from where it is now, that should work out nicely. And as we're about to jump in the water with the nasties again, let's take some more potions and let's figure out where to put this station. So I've got one station in, which is called Oil Rig. Let's just pull into that and see where we line up. And I'd say that's pretty good. But the thing is, we've actually got three different resources that we want to be pulling out of here and taking back to the main island. In fact, probably just the two will be fine. I don't really care about the fish. So that means we're going to need two exit points here, a bunch of item drains, and then if we were to put a storage interface or two on this bit, do I have any? Well, I have one. Is that going to be in the right place is the question. So it has just occurred to me, I don't think I've actually put any storage on this boat, so that's not going to connect at all, is it? Let's quickly jump back inside. We should be safe to disassemble. And then let's just stick some storage on. Get that reassembled. Oh no, what's that done to me, boat? I've just reassembled it and everything seems to have sort of changed orientation. That is really not helpful, game. I guess I need to do a bit of rebuilding. Oh, and now there's more phantoms as well. It's all going wrong. I won't complain about the additional phantom membrane, though. Okay, I think I've fixed everything that went wonky. Let's try that again. Ah! I'm not invisible anymore! So now, hopefully, as we pull into each station, we should first get the prismarine crystals. Excellent. And then the next station, we should get the other ones. Look at that. Works a treat. So next up, we need to go line up the other side, which means we need to drive this boat all the way back again. Onwards. Oh, I need to fix the track first. Because, of course, every time I disassemble it, it destroys all the track that was kind of in the way underneath it. So, yeah, this might happen every now and then. Although, in theory, I won't have to disassemble the ship anymore. Oh, just as I say that, look at that. Look, the front's all buckled as well. Ah! So once again, I'm going to get all of this fixed up, and I'll see you back at the other dock once we're done. So after a lot of messing around, I have managed to finally get the oil tanker back over here, and everything's facing the right way, which is nice. Now I need to hook up storage on this side. So I guess if we were to sit the storage interface behind it there... Then what we'll do is we'll just link up some drawers all the way to the bottom of one of the warehouses on the dock. Although... Oh, it's quite tempting. What we could do is actually have it all feed into just something up here, one of these containers. There's enough boxes here after all. We could just make one a proper vault. And then maybe we could have like a little forklift that goes between the dock and the warehouse and just takes the goods. 
It'll be a bit more immersive than just having drawers under the dock after all, won't it? And you know what? I think I might just do that. But first off, let's just get it offloading into a vault over here somewhere. And these shipping containers aren't going to be the best for that because they can only actually hold a stack in each one of the blocks that they take up. Unlike a vault, which can hold 20 stacks in one block. So I think a proper vault's definitely going to be the way to go here. And it doesn't even need to be a particularly big one. So what I might do if we just punch a little hole down there and then we'll stick a vault in here. But I don't think I've actually got enough pieces. That'd be a no. So we're going to make a few more vaults. We'll get all this connected up and then we'll figure out how we're going to do this forklift. I decided against a vault in the end and decided to use drawers so we can actually keep the two resources separate. Linked it underground using some drawer trims and then connected it to the boat with a storage interface. I used item drains and more storage interfaces on the surface to create a pickup point for the forklift. And this is where we now are. And all those things have been offloading from the boat. And we've actually got like 12,000 of those and 3,000 of those. I guess we must have left it parked at that port for quite a lot of the other side but the important thing is this is actually now ready to get scheduled and sort of start doing its trips i guess and that means i need to find myself a driver what's this a two well i don't think i want this guy to be the driver but we've got more than one seat in the boat he needs to sit somewhere so you can just sit there buddy <laughs> oh i love him he's amazing and that little Patu is too cute not to have a name. So if you've got an idea for a name, do let me know in the comments. You know the drill. But we still need a driver, and I think this sheep over here will do just nicely. I wanted to have a driver that's actually hopefully going to be tall enough to be able to see out the window. Oh. So as I was saying, I think a cow would be absolutely perfect. And you can sit there. Yep, that's perfect. He can see out the window. So let's quickly make him a schedule. So the schedule is set. So I think we should go on a cinematic maiden voyage. So let's make it fancy. Give him that. And we should be off. Well, it took an entire Minecraft day and half the night, but it did in fact complete its journey, which is exactly what we wanted to see. It's all connected up, and in fact, it's now setting off again. Good work, buddy. But we do still need to name this as well, so if you've got an idea for a name for the boat, the driver, and of course, the weird bird thing we've got in there, let me know in the comments and we'll pick the best ones next episode. So the next step is going to be to make a forklift of some kind to transport everything from here over to that warehouse there which means we're gonna need to add more track here we do need to extend this road all the way to the fish factory anyway but yeah we're gonna need to connect it over here somewhere so we've got a bit of work to do down here but once it's all set up and ready down here we can make a start on the forklift up the top so i've got some rail in down the bottom there and this should hopefully be good enough for the forklift but we do need to figure out how big this thing's going to be probably something around that sort of size which hmm is it going to be too big for this area, maybe? And how do we even forklift? Although, thinking about it, I have actually built a forklift before. But if I just run over to these looms and then slowly back away again, suddenly we're in a completely different place. I love how that works. And this is somewhere I have not been for a very long time. And I'll tell you what, I do miss it. And for those who don't know, this is actually my hardcore world, or at least a small part of it. But I'm here to look at this, the forklift. I don't think we're going to be able to get one much smaller than this. And I do quite like the design of this one. And I reckon if we were to combine this with some of the framed blocks and other new bits and bobs we've got, we could probably do something quite good. And I think I do actually have a couple of forklifts around here. I'm sure there's another one somewhere. Yep, here's one. Is it the same? It does look pretty much the same, doesn't it? But if we were to put a box like this on it as well, we would be able to hide a couple of storage interfaces in it. And I think that could work quite nicely. So let's take a quick photo. Have a quick fly around the city because I really do miss this place. Oh, we'll be back. We will be back. I, I, I don't know when. Maybe the next Minecraft update? Who knows? I mean, do you even want to see more hardcore episodes? Let me know. We could even just come back and do a tour, potentially. Anyway, we need to go home. Back to the looms. 
And there we are. Right, back in the real world. Now, forklift. I'm going to need to go grab myself some resources first, methinks. A few minutes later, I've got what I need. Now we just need to actually build a forklift. But I guess you've kind of already seen what the end result's most likely going to be. So I'm just going to quickly get this built up. And there we go, one forklift. I've just tweaked a few bits from the original design, mainly to include some girders, but I think this should work nicely. What I need to do now, however, is actually turn it into a train. So let's just stick a station down here, click create new train, add a train casing, and then we'll just use some clear glass panes like we usually do. Get all that glued together and assemble train. Look at that, first time. That's rare. So now what I need to do is see if it lines up over on the right at any point. Oh, it does. Look at that. Perfect. So that's where we need it. I'm amazed we actually got that right first time. That never happens. So if we put a station down here, so we know that that's going to work. But here comes the difficult bit because I don't want to be reversing all the way back out onto the main road. I kind of want to see if we can get away with reversing this way a little bit. But I don't know how that's going to pan out. Let's have a little look-see. So that's that station. And then if we go... Nope, not quite like that. We go like that. Okay. I reckon with a few adjustments down here, we might actually be able to get that to work. We only really need to adjust the surface here. If we remove the crates on the right-hand side and just make this sort of platform bit here a little bit wider, we might get away with it. But can we get back out? It looks like we can. Once again, we'll just remove that box there on the left-hand side. But I think we're good. And then this guy's going to go all the way over here and then pull into the warehouse there. So that's awesome. It's definitely going to work. I just need to spend a bit of time tidying up up here so we can actually give enough space for the forklift to move around. All right. A short while later, a few signal boxes and some stations. I think we're all set. So the forklift should go around this corner here just fine now. And then over to this bit where it goes to collect. Look at that, and then it reverses. If we look at that from above, we can see it's just about got enough space. I mean, it's a bit tight, but it'll do. And then it can go back out again, go all the way around this way. And then pull into this warehouse here. So if we quickly set up an offloading system in this area, so something like that, and then we're going to need a vault, a couple of item drains, and some funnels. And in fact, instead of vaults, because once again, we do need to keep these things separate so we can actually craft them into the stuff and things we need, what we'll actually do is feed these into a draw controller. Oh, wait a minute, that's not going to work. We need to lower this. So hopefully, if we just do that, we should start getting everything loading in. Oh, wait a minute, that needs to be a draw controller slave, and the draw controller should be down there. Oh, no, it's not that at all. It's because I haven't actually marked on the boxes what should be going in them. So if we do that, there we go. Now it's offloading. So all this forklift needs is a driver and a schedule. And I should probably patch up the road as well. I've left holes all over the place. And I'm sure you've noticed, but it's definitely starting to get a little bit framey around here. We've built a lot of factories, a lot of production things going on. And this part of the world is starting to struggle just a tad. But it's fine. We're moving to a new area soon. So this little raccoon, he looks like a forklift driver. Come with me, sir. Oh, look at his little tail go. Oh, he loves it. He's so excited. You're about to be an employed raccoon. Now let's quickly set up a schedule. And that should just about do it. Off you go, buddy. Oh, he needs to be slowed down. Come here. Right, you carry on. And that's awesome. The forklift's doing its thing. We've got the boat going. Oh, no, the forklift is not doing its thing. Seems to be having some kind of a problem. But I think I know what that is. I think this station here just needs to be moved back a block. Because currently it can't get onto the right bend. And yep, there we go. That fixed it. Off you go, buddy. Now let's just make sure he comes back. Yep, here he comes. And hopefully this time it will reverse properly. Excellent. So this is all well and good, but something I do need to do is head back over to the monument and just make sure that the actual sort of bit where the boat picks up all the things is chunk loaded because currently it's going over there and not collecting anything. So all I need to do is select these two bits here, make sure they're loaded and we should be good. And with any luck, the cargo ship should be coming in fairly soon. 
In fact, there it is just now, coming to do its thing. So with the boat done, we're now transporting everything from the oil rig over to the dock. With the forklift done, we're now transporting it into the warehouse. Now we just need to process it into usable blocks. And that's going to be interesting to figure out because we don't actually have a black dye farm. So we can't make dark prismarine. But that doesn't mean we can't automate sea lanterns, prismarine bricks, prismarine, and, well, I suppose we could set up for dark prismarine, even if we can't automate it fully yet. We can definitely get our hands on a whole bunch of black dye and just preload the factory to begin with. And maybe we'll automate it in future, who knows. Thankfully, the recipes for all these things are fairly straightforward. They only have one step, which is nice. But we are still going to need to rearrange some things over here, so let's get rid of them from there for now. We'll put them over here just so we can always see how much we've got, but now we need to figure out the start of this factory. But as I say, thankfully, it's all fairly straightforward, so so the first two, what we're going to do is we're going to get some mechanical presses. We're going to get a couple of basins. We'll put the basins here. We'll have them exit over this side. We'll use some draw controller slaves there and there. And once again, to feed everything back in. We'll add some funnels with filters. We'll have this one send out four at a time. We'll have this one send out nine at a time. Get the mechanical presses in. And I guess we should probably think about power, actually. And with that in mind, I'm actually going to move this one block away from the wall. And that way, we can just sneak some power in along the side here. There we go. That's some power stolen. And while we're here, actually, let's just quickly connect up the storage as well. We'll get the mechanical presses back in. And as soon as we put these down, we should... Hopefully. Yep, there we go. Oh, not this one. I haven't set the filter. And I want to make sure that they're always producing the right thing. So we're going to do that and that. And as soon as we attach some more empty drawers to the system, these will all start feeding in there. But I don't want to use everything up. So we're not going to do that just yet. So next up, I want to make myself some sea lanterns. So let me just get rid of these for now. So we don't start spitting stuff out everywhere. And we'll just replace those with them temporarily. And then for sea lanterns, we're going to need four of these and five of these. In fact, just to make this look a bit better, I'm going to leave this as it was and just build a whole separate machine. So we'll put one in the middle here instead, I think. And we're going to want four shards, five crystals. And these ones are going to go onto depots, which this dude's then going to pick up and feed into a mechanical crafter. But we don't actually have any mechanical crafters. Question is, can I make any here without having to run away? Uh, actually, probably. Yep, look at that. Wonderful. So for the mechanical crafters, we're going to need nine. In fact, I'm going to raise it up a level there just to make powering it and getting the stuff out of it a little bit easier. You can feed that directly into there. Get all that connected up underground. Then what we want to do is stick a load of andesite funnels on the back here. I don't really want to waste brass ones because we're going to have two arms doing this anyway. So the first arm is going to take from there and put into those five. And the second arm is going to go for those four corners, take from there, and that should give us the right recipe layout for sea lanterns. If I've done it the right way around, which I think I have. Then we just need to steal some power. It should be easy enough to do that. And we also need to power the crafting table, but that's probably actually going to be easier from up here. We can just do that and stick a cog there. Now let's quickly test and see if this is going to make what we want. Oh, no, of course it's not. We've not actually linked up the storage yet. Right, so that should do it. There we go. Are we going to get sea lanterns? We are. And they have nowhere to go once again. Same as the other ones. But once again, that's absolutely fine for now. We'll sort out a nice little place for it all to get stored later. But the last thing we want to sort here is dark prismarine. And to be honest, I might just kind of reflect this over here. Because it needs the same layouts. So we're pretty much set up over here. The last thing I need to do is just set the filters. So we're going to need eight of these at a time. And we're going to need one black ink. But as I say, we're not actually auto producing that anywhere at the moment. So for now, what I might do is just stick another crate here then i can just load up loads of ink and let it do its thing when it has it i'm sure we can find a way to get a whole load of black ink pretty quickly and so i guess the last thing i need to do is just have somewhere for all of the final resources to go and i'm thinking we'll just put a nice little thing over here and there we go just something as simple as that will do for now and all the machines have kicked in because they can actually drop off what they're making which is nice the only thing we're still missing is a whole bunch of ink. So let's go see if we can make some. I have an idea, but it's going to involve a whole lot of wood. And what I'm hoping is that we can turn all of this into charcoal. And my hope is if we now go crush a bunch of this over here in the big wheel thing, hopefully that's going to give us black dye. It does. Ooh, and some grey. I don't need that. I just want black. So let's just make loads of it and just stock up the system for now. And the good news is we've got so much wood, it's really not going to make a dent. And there we go. Almost 8,000 ink. That should keep it going for a while. And the last thing we need to do is to get these four resources 
over to the main warehouse. And when it comes to pickup for these items, we've just built in this warehouse here, and we already have a pickup area right out the back here with four slots empty. So, well, I think this makes sense to put it here. Now all I need to do is catch this delivery guy. Okay, let's steal his schedule. So, picks up cobble, moss factory, drops that off there. Yep, yep, yep. Then it picks up kelp, it picks up moss. So what we want to do is put in some extra stops around here. So if we just add in all these extra stops, we should be fine. And now we play the waiting game and just see if he actually turns up over here and picks up the stuff we want him to. Oh, is it? I was eating a muffin. Oh, jeez. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing the funnels. Well, I managed to get the last one on in time, and that just proves he has space, I guess. Well, it looks like he's doing what he needs to, and we know that that side of the warehouse works, so I declare this complete. What a day of transportation it's been. We've got our forklift going around doing its thing with our lovely raccoon driver. We've got our giant cargo ship somewhere, probably off over the horizon. And we're getting a bunch of new bricks up to the warehouse. What a great day indeed. And don't forget, if you have name ideas for our captain and our first mate over here, please do let me know in the comments, and the big oil tanker could do with the name as well. And while you're down in the comments, if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet and you are enjoying these episodes, please do, because it really does help the channel out. And I don't ask often. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I've had a whale of a time, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last episode, I built a gigantic oil tanker, a forklift truck, and a factory to transport and process prismarine products from this oil rig to this main storage warehouse. Which brings us one step closer to our next big project. However, I can't leave this area unfinished, primarily this area behind me. I mean, we will be back in the future to add more anyway. This is our main storage depot after all. We're still going to be shipping goods over here. But there are a few things I do want to sort this week so that next week we can move far, far away and start playing with planes. So I know what you're wondering. What could I possibly still need to do in this area. Well, let me tell you. We need to build a transport hub over here somewhere so we can transport items from these two buildings at the docks and actually get them into the main storage warehouse. And we're going to need a new vehicle to handle that. I want to build a new factory over here so that we can automate the production of diamonds because that's what we're actually using for our storage upgrades. And although emeralds are actually better for storage upgrades, diamonds are going to be much easier for us to automate. So that's the route we're going to take. Over here in the warehouse, I need to add a whole bunch more stations. You may notice there's not actually any on this side and that means all all the resources we're gathering here are not connected to the BPD network, which is, of course, Beardy's Package Delivery Service, the train that we have over at our main base that we send here to collect things when we need them. It would be nice if it could collect all the shinies over here as well, and I have no idea where we're going to hide those stations, so that's going to be fun. And then we also need to do a bunch of terraforming. We need to do some texturing on these roads around here and essentially just get things prepared for our next project. But the problem is I've only got two days to record and edit this entire video, and I've already lost three hours this morning just because of life. So I have no idea how far through all of this we're gonna get but let's see shall we which means i should probably stop waffling and start organizing the first thing i want to do is sort out this terrain just so it's a bit nicer to build on and we're gonna build a nice 1950s style petrol station or gas station for those across the pond over here and that's what we're gonna use as a drop-off point but this terrain is not very nice to work with currently so let's see what we can do we'll start just by getting in a couple of walls just to get all this divided up so we'll widen this road ever so slightly up to this wall and i think i want to put a small sort of car park area in here Maybe just up to this sort of area, because what I want to make sure we're doing is building our garage up here, but not having lots of sort of overhang that we don't really need. So maybe a small set of parking bays here is going to aid with that. And then what we can do is on this side, just bring it all the way out, because we're going to need a much bigger area for the factory. But I don't think I want to bring this wall all the way to the edge here, because it's going to make this bit feel very, very enclosed. So maybe if we just go to here, and then we can just put some trees and a bit of foliage on either side of this road, just because, well, it's very tarmac at the moment, isn't it? And it'll add a nice splash of colour as well. Now on this side, we'll just bring it right up to the road. Okay, that should do the tricks. So we'll put the diamond factory over here, we'll put the garage here, and a small little car park. Let's just quickly get this terrain leveled off. And now that's done, we can see exactly what we're working with. And yep, I think this is going to be the perfect space for a garage. But before I start building the garage itself, I do think I want to actually tidy up the area around here just a little bit more. Because although I've got a bit of an idea in my head of how I want this garage to look, I still need to figure out a few bits of what materials I'm going to build it out of. So while I think about that, that, I figure I may as well actually just sort out the rest of these roads, get everything looking a little bit nicer, so that when we do start building, we can hit the ground running and have a beautiful area to build it in. So I fixed up the road, then immediately got distracted, and instead of texturing it, I added a small gravel car park on the lower section, and then used some coarse dirt, rooted dirt, rough gravel, and some dirty gravel to break up the surface a little bit. Doesn't that look lovely? 
Back up top, I put fences on the walls and marked out a rough area for the petrol station, then replaced the grass in the courtyard area with some deep slates. I grabbed some smooth basalt and sanded deep slate and mixed this into the courtyard surface alongside some coarse dirt and grass, and then carried this on throughout the roads. I then eventually got back to the walls, mixed in some stone varieties to break up the repetitive surface, and carried this all the way around the gravel car park. The addition of some mossy blocks helped to make it look poorly maintained, and I think we're almost ready to start the garage. I have a plan finally. And that plan is going to start here with some petrol pumps. And I was originally going to actually have these sort of done in such a way that they are the slave controllers, so that when the van comes in, it connects to the petrol pump and drops everything off. But then I got to thinking about it, and trying to make that look good and make it look like petrol pumps is just not going to happen. So instead, we'll have the van pull up, and we'll probably just collect things from underground, which gives us a lot more freedom for these pumps. And I don't know if this is going to work, but I do have a little bit of an idea. They're going to be too tall. Maybe they should be that high. But if we use these fluid tanks, we can potentially stick some little levers on the side and some Nixie tubes on top. They do look a little bit short, actually. Maybe we should go taller. And then we could potentially double up on the levers like that. Ooh. Okay, so that gives it a number based on the redstone power. Fair enough. Kind of makes it look like it's got a price on top of it. I quite like that, actually. And then next up, I want to get some support in because we're going to put a shelter over this. That's probably tall enough. And then we'll have a big sheltery bit that goes across the top and then connects to a building that doesn't currently exist. And this is the bit I've been struggling with. It's what to build it out of. And I think I've got a plan and potential colour palette that might work. But I need to head back to main storage and pick up a few bits. Now, what I'm thinking is we're going to use limestone for a decent chunk of it. We'll also take some diorite because if we go over here and put that in this... Whoa, what's going on here? That looks different. So part of the reason I had already lost three hours of my very tight schedule was because I was actually updating the pack this morning. And it appears there's been a fancy little update here. Oh, look at this. So you can actually get a preview of what it looks like with the different blocks. So you can see if they're connected or not. Oh, I like this. And it highlights the same block that I've already got in there, which is quite cool. But if, for example, I wanted lots of sanded diorites, if I put that back in there, does it? No, it doesn't remember. But it's got a search bar. Oh, that's nice. That's going to make things so much quicker. And even better than that, if I hold shift, it crafts all of it. Look at that. Well, that's all very fancy. Do they all look like that? They do. I mean, I don't know what I expected. They probably should, I guess. But I guess now's as good a time as any to tell you about the pack update. I have been meaning to do it for a few weeks because we have added a couple of extra mods, such as the fishing bobbers, but I've also added create power loaders, which I'm hoping are going to help with the lag issue on the server. But essentially, it gives me chunk loaders that are actually workable with create, and this brass chunk loader in particular is very, very handy. Because the problem I have is that a lot of the chunks I have loaded are purely loaded so that when trains get there, they can still pick up all the resources that have been generated. But with this, we can actually attach it directly to the side of a train station and the chunks are not loaded unless a train turns up like this and then boom once it connects to the station the chunks will load and then that will turn on the machines it will load up the train and then when it drives off it will turn back off and that means i can probably halve the amount of chunks that i have permanently loaded on this server and that's going to make me very happy and hopefully reduce some lag spikes besides that i've also added create central kitchen because we're about to start experimenting with food and basically what this will do is actually allow us to use blaze burners as chefs and that's going to give us full access to loads of recipes, so when it does come to our food area, we're going to have a fully-fledged restaurant on the go. And the last mod that I've added is Create Liquid Fuel, which I haven't actually tested yet. But what that should let us do is just be able to pump lava directly into blaze burners, and that's the only thing it adds. Because the problem with the other ones I was looking at, the ones that actually had the straws, it added lots of stuff I just didn't really want in my world. But once I have tested that and made sure it works and just done a few other bug checks... The pack update will be on CurseForge, hopefully by the time this video comes out, if not, slightly later on in the week. And that's not all, I'm also going to be doing much more regular world downloads for patrons and YouTube members, with the aim being to release a world download roughly in the middle of every month. Which does mean by the time this episode goes out, there should be another world download available for you as well. But anyway, enough distractions, we're going to be using a whole bunch of white blocks. And the other thing I want to use is a nice bright red colour. And I think we're going to go with red concrete for that. So if we grab some sand and gravel and some red dye and then chuck all that in the washer, we'll have some red concrete too. And the last thing we need is some white stained glass panes. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, we didn't need that many. Now let's do some experimenting because I don't know what block I want to use at the bottom here. I know I want it to be limestone, but there's a few different variants I want to test out. And I'm already leaning towards the pillar. I think that looks better than this. 
Don't really want to be using plain blocks down here. And to be honest, those bricks there aren't really working for me either. So let's go with the pillars here. And let's see if we can just build up a small section of the wall and figure out how it's going to look. Because one thing I want to do is potentially something like this. If we can just double those up and stick in like a red band around the building. Although that feels a bit high up. Maybe I should actually switch these rounds. We'll try the other red block this time as well. Put those at the bottom and then we'll have white blocks on top which i guess at this stage for now let's just see what it looks like with a normal limestone kind of hard to tell at the moment i think i need to build up just a little bit more here so i can get a proper look at it let's maybe try swapping out these red blocks here i think they're a little bit busy we'll try some plain ones on this side as well so what do we think you know what i think i actually prefer just the plain red concrete yeah i think that definitely sits nicer Let's just stick a couple of fans above where the door's going to be. Okay, I think I like that. Question is, how are we going to make this sort of all tie in? Because we do need to have a shelter over this bit. Maybe just something like that and then connect it to the building. But then design-wise, I do want to try and get a bit of colour on this. So I wonder, maybe instead of using full blocks, if I was just to use some slabs here, could I then put more slabs on top and make those reds? Is this going to be, like, really Larry? I mean, I like the splash of colour, but I don't like how it's looking. Let's just build out this side a little bit. Hmm, no, it's still looking a little bit flat, isn't it? I wonder, maybe we can poke it out a little bit. And maybe we can even poke it out at the bottom here as well. Oh yeah, that's much better. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Let's get this wrapped all the way around. So I've got the rest of that roof in, and I can't decide if the petrol thing should be smaller or bigger. I'm leaning towards smaller? Let's make them smaller for now, but let me know in the comments what you think. Okay, so now we've got this section sorted. We need to figure out the rest of the building, and I guess it's going to need to be taller, otherwise that front panel is going to look weird. The question is, do we want to do a similar sort of sticky-outy bit over here? Because we could potentially just sort of carry this on this way, can't we? And then just get that same sort of band running around there. And I think all of this could work. The only potential problem is that I think this roof here might be a little bit too low. Maybe I should raise the whole thing up by a block. Yep, I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to make it all a block taller. Well, I moved it up half a block in the end just to get it off that window, and I think that definitely works. And having it like that means that hopefully this will sit a little bit better on the main building as well. Oh yeah, that's really coming together. I'm liking that. I've just tried out some of these supports as well, and to be honest with you... I'm not so sold. The copper ones are a definite no. Andesite ones, maybe? It almost just feels like this roof here is like half a block too high. Maybe I could just lower that. We'll get there eventually. Let's try rejigging just this roof again. Now that feels much better. But what's going to feel better than that is having the rest of the building in. So let's just get the rest of these walls up. All right, the walls are up. It's looking good. Well, it's looking better. It's looking very plain though, isn't it? So next step. Get a roof on, get some texture in, and get a floor on the inside. And for the floor, I think I'm going to make myself some light grey concrete. So let's get that solidified. And for the door, I'm fairly sure that there's actually a glass sliding door of some kind. But I can't see it. And I also can't see any of the train stuff. So I think I just need to do a quick restart. This happens occasionally. And there we go. Our train stuff's back, which means hopefully so is our door. Yeah, there we go. This one here, I think this is what we're after. So I need some framed glass and I need a door. And hopefully this will do what I want. Yeah, look at that. Slidey door. Now, let's start with the floor here. I want to mix in a bit of texture here and there on this floor. I do want to make it look a little bit worn. And I'm wondering if we can use a sort of a combination of this sanded tuff, some of the light grey concrete as well, maybe. Bit of light grey wool as well, potentially. And I don't think we need much. Just a couple of patches here and there to break it up a little bit. I think that'll do for now. Once we actually decorate the interior, that'll probably change anyway. For the roof, I'm just going to fill it all with slabs first. And then we're going to get a bit of texture on here as well. So with this, we're going to start darker at the edges with some tough maybe a little bit of cobble here and there as well then some sanded tough and a little bit of stone and then we'll have the sort of main bulk of it being andesites and we're gonna need to mix this up a little bit more but you get the idea all right i think that's working but while we're up here let's add in some fans and make it look a little bit more 
Ah. So as I was saying, it's looking lovely, but let's put in some roof fans here. Maybe we should try digging out a little bit of a hole. There we go, much better. And just to give you a progress update on the time, it's actually Tuesday morning now, so I'm fast running out of time to get this video done. But we're making progress, it's looking nice. But I have a feeling we're probably not going to get to the diamond factory today, so that's probably going to have to be Sunday. But it's fine, it just means you're probably going to get a slightly different episode in that, uh, well, you're going to get more of an insight into my build process as I talk through things a little bit more. Otherwise, you'll end up with a five minute video and where's the fun in that but at least we are making progress the roof is in the floor is in now we just need to work on the outside of the building here although actually let's quickly stick the doors in not quite there we go that's what we want sliding doors wonderful now let's just do a small experiment in this back corner here first i think so we'll get a bit of diorite in to begin with maybe some sanded diorites potentially a bit of calcite as well maybe and i've also got this eroded diorite but i do worry is that going to be too light? Actually, I think that works quite well. And I've also got a bit of red terracotta for this, just so we can break up the sort of beam that runs around. All right, I think this could actually work quite nicely. And I should be able to soften this a little bit just by doing that and using some half slabs. But I'll tell you what, there is one other thing I want. And it's something I don't have any of. But I'm sure we can find some, so I'm going to take my shears. And we're going to fly over this way, where I'm fairly sure there's a big hole in the ground and an entrance to a lush cave. Yep, here we go. This is the one. And this is what I'm after, some glow lichen. Maybe some vines as well. Okay, not vines, just glow lichen. Problem is, it's not a lot of glow lichen, but I reckon we can solve that. So we'll put an observer there, an observer there, dispenser there, stick a bit of glow lichen on it, wrap a few blocks around the dispenser, and then chuck in some bone mill. That's actual bones. Let's quickly break that down. And in theory, if I just stand here and do this, I'll get loads of glow lichen. Look at that. Wonderful. About a minute later, we've got just over three stacks. That's much more like it. Then with a bit of glow lichen in the mix, I think this could work quite nicely. We'll also use some cut limestone on a few of the walls where we're not going to be doing heavy texturing. Yeah, I think this could work well. Let's just sort out the rest of the building. Looking good, but one thing it really needs is some lights. And for that, I think we may as well grab a few sea lanterns. And look at all these varieties we've got. Although, to be honest, I think I just want these. And what I should be able to do... Yeah, look at that. So that will light up the front area here. Now, I wonder, could I maybe do something like this? That looks horrific. We'll figure out something else for the lighting. Maybe just some of these is the way to go. I mean, they look all right, I guess. We might have to experiment with the lights a little bit. So we are almost done here, but there's definitely something missing, and that's a sign. I've got an idea for this, which is hopefully going to work, although we're not going to be able to do the full idea. We're going to have to take a bit of a shortcut today because of time, but let's try this out. So we'll just get a little pole in on the corner. Then we're going to use some red concrete here, and we're going to make a circle-ish. More of a hexagon, I guess. Replace the middle block with a light. And then we're going to use one of these, which is an immersive painting, but this is the graffiti one, so it kind of, well, basically it doesn't need to be a solid image. It can use PNGs. And I was going to make myself a custom image, but as we don't have time, I've just stolen this one from Google for now. We'll shrink that down ever so slightly to give it a border. Three by three, that should be about right. Now, how does that look? I'll tell you what, for a stolen image, it looks pretty good. We'll just stick the same thing on the other side. And if I just go into my video settings and sort out the brightness... Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. We've got a nice glowing sign up there. Oh, and look at it with the shaders. What a beautiful building. But we're not done yet. We've still got some space around here. I want to put a couple of units on the side here as well, just to give the wall a little bit more. So let's see what random stuff we can stick to it, shall we? Random things stuck on side. We'll also stick in a couple of storage tanks, I think, down here. It is a petrol station after all. And maybe we should get a couple of pipes in the ground. Just like that. There we go. That's a nice little bit of detail. And maybe on this side here, we should add some roof access so we can stick a ladder in. I'll also add in a couple of pipes over here. And I'd say, from the outside at least, that's looking pretty much done. I do still need to sort the interior, but we'll come back to that later. But now what I need to do is actually connect up the drop-off system. So if we dig a hole about here, put in a slave controller, and then we just need to get these drawers connected up to the main storage. So we've got it all linked up. Let's just check if it's in range. And it is. Beautiful. Because if it wasn't in range, nothing would have come out of there. So let's stick a storage interface there. 
and thinking about it, we're actually going to need to lower that by a block because we need to put a shoot in. So a shoot there, then the draw control to slave, and another trim. Then we can just use a couple of these up here just to sort of blend that in, and no one will ever know. So the garage over here is all ready to start receiving goods. However, we don't actually have a spare delivery vehicle. The ones we've already got going around are fairly busy. They've all got multiple jobs and multiple deliveries that they do. So I think a brand new delivery vehicle that just basically goes between these buildings and the garage here is pretty much what we're going to need. But we don't currently actually have a collection point down here either. So we've got a few things we're going to need to do to get this to work. But we do have plenty of space here to put something in. So that shouldn't be an issue. And although I said we need to make a new truck, we do actually have a truck here we could use. Look, I'm on a tight schedule, okay? But this truck here isn't doing anything and it is already a train. So, I mean, it'd be rude not to, right? So let's just take this round here. And I think this is about where our track ends. So I guess before we can do anything else, I'm going to need to go underground. I'm going to need to put in lots of rail to connect up all of these roads. Oh, jeez, it's going to be a nightmare. There's so much up and downhill. Well, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or two. But I'll see you in just a moment, hopefully with some rail all lined up. It's not been easy, but I've managed to get all the track in position and we're ready to basically set up the pickup points over here. So I think I'm going to do that first and then I'll show you the route that we're taking. And well, it, it's a little bit janky in a couple of places, but it's fine. It'll do the job. There was a lot of trial and error during all of that. So if we put three in front of this garage door here and we put three in this little bit over here, that should be plenty. So we'll just do what we normally do. We'll use redstone links to make this work. We need one for dirt, coarse dirt, and mud over here. We'll set them all to receive. And then down here, we'll set stations. So we need three here with comparators and redstone links that match the signals up top. So that was dirt, coarse dirt, mud. Nope, wait a minute. I need to actually invert these signals. So if we do this... And then put the links in. That should work much better for us. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Then we need draw controller slaves on these with some funnels. Filter those appropriately. Have them go into there. We'll give these guys a home over in the main warehouse for storage. And get these linked up so that they'll actually turn off when main storage is full. And that will just stop the truck from overloading. Now I just need to do the same over here for the basalts. And there we go. I think we're just about done. We've also got a spare one here. But what I need now is a driver and a schedule. You'll do, sir. Oh. Let's try that again. There we go, in there. Let's set up a schedule. So his schedule is ready. The last thing I need to do is actually go back underground because I haven't connected these drawers to the things they're actually collecting yet. So we need to connect this one down here. So that should be connected. And then we need to connect this one just over to the other side here so it can get the mud and dirt. And now, yep, we've got those on the item drains ready to get collected. Same there. So I guess it's your time to shine, buddy. Let's give you the schedule. So let's see if he does what he's supposed to. And we've even got a seed in the back here so we can just sit with him while he does his job. Well, there was a slight boo-boo there. I had these stations facing the wrong way. So let's go give it another go. You can have your schedule back. It's going very slow at the moment. We're going to have to speed him up a little bit. But so far, so good. He just about makes it round this corner. He should make it round here as well. Yep, there we go. Look at that. And now we should pull into the garage nicely. Oh, we clip a curb there. I'm going to have to shrink that down. We're connected underneath, so it should be offloading everything. And then as soon as there's inactivity in the cargo for 10 seconds, it should then pull away and set off again. Hopefully. Although I feel like it's maybe taking a little bit too long. Let's go check this out. Make sure it's doing what it should be. Two hours that has taken me. I was having a lot of issues with collisions and crashes and things on this junction here. And for some reason, this delivery truck here just keeps doing weird things. And I, I don't know if it's going to work or not yet, but it, it just couldn't find its way to a station for some reason. A station it's been visiting for three months. But I think we're sorted now, so I'm just going to stand here and watch for a little bit and just keep an eye on this junction here, because this was the problem-making one. So you're probably going to see a sped-up version. <laughs> Well, it's 
been a couple of in-game days and we haven't had any further accidents, so I think I'm safe to just leave this to run and do its thing. In fact, here it comes again. Look, I do love it. So now all that's left to do is the interior. Wow, Mr. Beardstone. Just wow. Jeez. I wonder where you got that idea from, hmm? Oh, right, I see. This is because I built a petrol station. Just... Look, just because you built a petrol station doesn't mean I can't build a petrol station. I built factories. Does that mean Foxy can't build factories? But anyway, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, I do need to sort out an interior for this place. But I've got a few ideas on how that can work. And if we turn around just like that, we have an interior. Look at that. I'm not going to lie, I did struggle a little bit here. But we've got the usual clutter you'd find out the front here, including the garage flowers, of course. We've also got those at the front desk. I built some shelves out of copycat panels and just tried to fill them with whatever clutter I could find that looks slightly interesting. The majority of which is actually just mob heads and pots, I guess. And then over the back here, we've got some food and drink fridges, which I do quite like. I think they've come out well. And of course, the cashier's desk, where I've made use of some straw statues. So they're selling a few sort of plushies slash cuddly toy type things. So we've got Zloy, Mrs. B, Foxy and myself. And we've even got to store them off behind the counter. But I think with that, we can safely say that this petrol station is done and looking pretty good. I do like it. And there was one last thing I was going to do today, which of course was to name the boat from last episode, as well as the captain and the first mate. However, that video only went out a couple of days ago and the names are still coming in thick and fast and there's some amazing options. I just want to see what else you come up with. So we'll do that at the start of next episode. And we'll sort out the proper sign for this garage as well. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last episode, I finally linked up the backside of the dockyard to the main storage by building a 50 style garage, which apparently looks like a garage called the Red Rocket in Fallout, but that wasn't intentional. I've never actually played it. Today, I build my final factory in this district, for now at least, in which we're going to turn this into this. And before we get started, I do just want to say a huge thank you to all of you still watching this series, 45 episodes in. I'm glad you're enjoying this world as much as I am, and the support has absolutely blown me away. But the good news is we're not done yet. I've still got some big plans for other parts of this world and other districts we're going to be creating, as well as a bit of a twist to the series, which will start to reveal itself in the coming weeks. So if you want to catch that, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell, as not only is that the best way to support the channel, it also makes sure that you never miss a thing. Diamonds. I need them. Lots of them. And what I need them for is diamond storage upgrades. And before you say it, I'm fully aware that the emerald storage upgrades are actually better. But as I said last episode, emeralds are harder to get hold of and I have absolutely zero intention of building a raid farm. I mean, just ask Foxy. He had a terrible time in his last episode trying to make emeralds. So we're going to stick with simplicity and go for diamonds. But the first thing we're going to need is a factory diagram. So let's grab a few bits and head back to the docks. So this should be quite a straightforward factory. The first thing we're going to do is grow some trees and then we're going to chop those down. We're going to cook them and we're going to get ourselves some charcoal. We're then going to compress the charcoal coal four pieces is going to give us one piece of coal and then we're going to compress nine pieces of coal into a coal block we're then going to take that coal block we're going to combine it with some lava and then that is going to give us diamonds and that's the entire thing so a fairly straightforward process but we're going to need a reasonable amount of space because we do need to put a small tree farm in here and i know we already have a massive tree farm and we could just import logs from there but to reduce server lag, I don't leave that farm running and I don't really want this farm to run out. So I think it makes more sense just to have its own very small independent tree farm. That way we can always have diamonds on the go without having to lag out the server. Because our main tree farm is massive and it does take a bit of a toll. So we have a plan, we have a location. I guess I should maybe start with the foundation. Oh, and as a side note, I have had a few people asking why the grass over here looks very, very white. And that's because this area here is a different biome to this. This is actually Dark Forest, where all the grass is lush and lovely. And this horrible grass here is actually coming from the Stony Shores biome, which we're kind of right on the edge of at this point. But anyway, that's not important. So what I want to do is get a foundation down in here. I want to make sure we've got a little area for sort of trucks to come in and turn around and so on as well. And that's what we're going to use this part here for, I think. So I should grab myself a whole bunch of stone and just plonk down a big square, I guess. And then we'll figure out a building of some kind. So I'm just over at main storage getting some resources together for this platform. And I've just remembered I did actually add another mod. And it's one that's going to make my life a little bit easier. I've been meaning to add it for a while. I just, well, I kept forgetting, to be perfectly honest. But what I can now do is make this thing, which is called a builder's wand. And what this allows me to do is essentially just place blocks a lot quicker. I build a lot of platforms. I do a lot of terraforming. And I spend a lot of time placing those blocks. And not only that, it's boring and it doesn't make good content. So to speed up that process, this wand, what it'll actually do is, well, you can kind of see the pattern that it's creating on the top at the moment. If I switch to 
of those in my offhand. If I was to right click, it would place a block in all of those highlighted places. But essentially, I can create any shape I like, such as that. And then with the wand, I can just extend that out and just make it bigger. And essentially, it just allows me to place blocks much quicker. I've now got to remove all of those. But this means instead of spending absolutely loads of time just placing blocks, I can get a foundation down and crack on with the video much quicker. And the updated pack is now fully released on Curse Forge as well, with the new mods we added last episode. So if you want the fun new toys, make sure you update. Now, I suppose I better take all this down. Ugh. Job done. Let's go build a foundation. And there we go. That took 20 seconds instead of 10 minutes. Wonderful. Let's just mess it up a little bit before we make a start. And quite often I get people asking why I don't use the trowel mod when I'm actually texturing and stuff like this. And it's because I like to have control. I don't like it all just random and scattered. I like to try and do it in patches and make it look a little bit more sort of realistic with how things would work. And the trowel mod just wouldn't let me do that. It's just a little bit too random for my liking. All right, something like that should do the trick nicely. Now I just need to choose what to actually build the factory out of. And because part of it is actually going to be growing trees, I think we're going to try and make good use of some glass. Although how we're going to do that yet, I do not know. But for now, let's go pick a block palette over here at Beardew Valley. First up, I think we're going to use some of these industrial iron sheet blocks. I quite like the look of those. We're going to need a whole bunch of glass, but what do we want? Maybe this one here would work quite well, but we're going to need more. So let's convert all of this as well. In fact, maybe the white one would be a little bit better. It's a bit brighter, isn't it? The white might be a little bit too bright though. So let's also get some light gray and some gray and we'll just experiment once we're over there. For the main building, I want to use some Dean bricks primarily, but we're also going to take some limestone and a few varieties of diorites. And I'm hoping that this color palette is going to work. But I don't see why it wouldn't. It's fairly similar to what we've already got down there. And I guess as the Viridium Shores train is here, we might as well get this back. It's been a while since we've ridden the train. Oh, wasn't that lovely? Right, so plans, things, stuff we need to do. We need to build a factory. And I've got a bit of an idea, so I'm just going to put down a floor layout and we'll see how it's looking size wise. So it doesn't look like much at the moment, but what I'm thinking is this bit here is going to be kind of like a greenhouse. It'll just be like a big glassy type dome type thing. I don't really know yet. We'll have a big tall bit here stuck on the front for some reason. And then we'll have the sort of main warehouse area is going to be inside this bricked area. And then we'll just have a small lean to off to the side for a bit of detail. And this glass bit here is going to be sort of one and a half stories tall, I think. Whereas this bit here will be one story. And then we'll stick a limestone bit on top that I think I want to sort of overhang this bit here, maybe. Not entirely sure. We'll have to see how that comes together. But I think it makes sense to get these smaller parts of the building in first because then we can sort of see what we're working with when it comes to the glass dome. Because that's going to be an interesting thing to try and put together. That's the easy bit done. I've got some rough building shapes in. I think that's going to work. I'm probably going to rip out this platform here, though, get some girders in for support over this side and so on. But we'll come back to that later. For now, I want to try and figure out this glass bit that I want to stick on the side for some reason. It's probably a terrible idea, but let's see how we get on. So I do want to have a look at the white and see how bright that is and compare that against the grey. That's actually a tough call, but I think I might go with the grey. I think I like the slightly grimier look. And because the borders seem to connect on this particular glass. I guess it also means I can't sort of just mix in some random white patches, but that's fine. So at the bottom here, I just want to build up some basic walls. About that high should do it, I think. Let's just put another support beam across the top here. And then I'm going to try and create some sort of a dome on here. This is probably not going to go well, but let's see what we can do. So for a first attempt, I'd say that's not too bad. We can maybe sort of smoothen off some of these corners a little bit. So I've just swapped out a couple of bits, and that's made a huge difference. It's looking better. But I feel like it needs some kind of support on these corners here. And I've got an idea. Let's grab some wood so that we can make some framed blocks. And then get some framed walls, which I think if we combine with these industrial iron blocks should work quite nicely. Because sadly, I can't actually put these sheet metal blocks into the framed blocks. As you can see, it just doesn't work. But these are a good second, I think. And they're going to work a bit better than girders because they're actually attaching to the glass here. And it looks like it's giving it a little bit more support than girders would. That feels a bit better. It's like it's supported now. But once we get all the detail in, we get some trees growing inside. We sort out the front. I think we can probably make that work. And as you can see, I've got a lot of work to do here on the outside so that means it's time to put on some awesome music and do a little montage see you in a bit
I think that should just about do it. That's looking pretty good. We've got lots of texture. I went really heavy on the sort of mossy corner here, but I really actually like how that looks. Although I have to say, it definitely looks better from a distance. And we will still, of course, need to add some clutter and so on once we've got all the delivery stuff in. But for now, what we actually need to do is make a start on the farm itself. I think the first thing I want to do is get the tree farm in because, well, that's probably going to be the most difficult bit to do just because of space. And then after that, we should easily be able to make some diamonds over here. We only need a few small machines on this side. So I guess the first thing I should do is probably just carve out a little bit of space here where we can put some dirt. And that's where we'll grow the trees. I do want to keep it three blocks away from any of the edges, though, because ideally I don't really want the leaves going through the glass. And in order to try and control growth, we're actually going to be sticking with birch saplings because they generally only go up to six or seven blocks tall and the leaves only ever go sort of two or three blocks out and then we're not going to end up with giant trees and so on. It should be a lot easier to control. At least that's the hope. So I think that's where we're going to plant the trees and then we're going to need a saw and I think we'll just have a saw that sort of starts here and just sweeps across. That should work fine. So we'll dig a little trench at the sides. And I was actually about to put a gantry in there, but that's probably not a good idea because the gantries, they can't basically go through solid objects, unlike contraptions. And that means if the gantry goes that way and then a tree goes behind it, it's going to get stuck. Whereas if we use a contraption, it'll basically just go backwards and forwards. And yeah, that should work much better. But I don't have any rail on me by the looks of it. So I'm going to head back. I'm going to grab a few bits. And I think I want to use farmer's soil here, which essentially works just like dirt. But occasionally whatever's on there will get the effects of bone meal. I have no idea if it affects saplings or not, but it definitely works for crops. But there's no harm in trying it here too. So rich soil, that's what we want. And to get that, we just need some organic compost and basically just stick it outside by the looks of it. How do we make this? Okay, that's fairly easy. So we'll grab some zombie flesh. We'll grab some bones. Ah, guess we're going to need a few more bones. Luckily, our mob farm's still well stocked. And the last thing we need is straw. But yeah, we, uh, we really don't have much of that. There's not really a good way for us to get it either because we're not actually farming rice currently. And we're not farming bamboo either. Oh, great. That means we're going to need to manually harvest this, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Doing it manually is taking absolutely forever, so I'm taking matters into my own hand. There we go. This should do it. Much better. Another four stacks in a matter of minutes. But now we should be able to make a whole bunch of this. And there we go. Organic compost. Let's go stick this outside by the ocean. In fact, just down here looks like it'll do the job nicely. And it doesn't say how long it's going to take, but it's out in the sun. It's okay. It's not adjacent to water, so that's probably not going to make any difference. And we don't have any activators either, but that's fine. Just the sun should do it. Well, I went and got myself a tasty lunch while this was doing its thing, but it looks like it's ready. So let's just pick up all of this soil. And to be honest, even if it doesn't speed up the saplings, I quite like the look of the block anyway. But let's just get all of this in here. That is going to be our tree planting area. Now let's build up a big saw and a planter as well, I guess. So we should probably take the deployers. Now, I think I want to keep this fairly simple. So maybe just get a girder in the back for supports. Stick a whole bunch of saws on the front. Don't need that one. And thinking about it, we're actually going to need deployers as well. So I don't think we're going to be able to have the girder there. And then we'll need a vault for storage. We'll stick a girder there for supports. In fact, let's make the vault a little bit longer. Fix the girders. And then we're going to want a storage interface on there. And a receiving one can go right here. In fact, I am going to take that girder off because I think it's going to be handy to be able to have access. We can put a switch here just to be able to turn the thing on and off. But rail, we didn't actually get rail, which is what we said we were going to do, but we got distracted by farmland. So let's go make some rail and then hopefully we can get this thing working. So we just need a bit of powered rail and maybe one of these for good measure. And we're also going to need a minecart, a cart assembler and a couple of levers. And thinking about it, I should probably go get myself some birch saplings as well. So hopefully we've got a few over here in this machine. Apparently not. It's destroying our saplings a little too well. Not to worry. Maybe we've got some over here. Oh yeah, look at that. Plenty. So what I'm going to do is just make sure all these deployers will only take birch saplings. We'll put a piece of rail there and then we're just going to put normal powered rail on the rest of it. And that means that when it gets powered, it will go that way and come back and it will keep doing that until we depower just this one here. Because this one, when it's powered, won't actually automatically power everything else as well. They're kind of independent of each other, which is good because it means we can always leave that powered and it's not going to affect that one. So let's get a cart assembler down. Make sure rotation is locked. We don't want this thing spinning all over the place. Let's get it all glued together. That should do it. 
Stick a minecart down. Turn that into a contraption, which should get it all going. Yep, look at that. Wonderful. Then we're going to put that in the back there. We're going to stick a lever on it. Then I'm going to steal the cart assembler and steal the redstone torch. Now, hopefully, we can just do that to turn it off and then turn it back on again. Wonderful. And if I just quickly plant all of the initial saplings down, when these grow, they'll basically just produce enough saplings to keep the machine running. I shouldn't need to preload it with anything. And look at that. Our first tree's just grown already. Wow, that was quick. Off you go. Hopefully that will happen, and then it should replant. Yep, it's already replanted. Excellent stuff. We could do with a bit of proper lighting in here, though. So if I turn my brightness down to normal, I think we're pretty dark in here. Although, to be fair, it is daytime, so maybe not right now. Let's maybe just stick a couple of lights on the ceiling here. And for now, I'm just going to dump a couple of lights down here just to help the saplings grow, but we'll actually sort out something proper later on when we decorate the rest of the factory. For now, we've got some more farming to do. I don't mean farming, I mean processing. Because this is just going to produce logs for us, so what we need to do, I guess, is sort those out. Because we're also going to get sticks, and we're going to have additional saplings as well, which, to be honest, I'm probably just going to burn. But for now, we should at least make sure that we're storing things. So let's just do this then if we do that so the logs are gonna go in there and the other things kind of want them to burn so will they continue to go past that apparently not but we can adjust this so if we just move this to here will that pick things up off the item drain that go past i don't actually know we could do a little test i suppose maybe if i can get something on there jeez if i can get something on there the right way no no, it does not. Okay, fine. No worries. But if we do this, we can make a four-drawer thing. So we can actually store different items in the same drawer. The problem is you can only store a quarter of the amount in each slot. So yeah, not quite as uh, not quite as good. But I suppose we can put some upgrades on. It's not really a big problem. And ideally, what we actually want to be doing is burn... But this is only temporary anyway, because we're probably going to be sorting out all of these things pretty quickly. Because, well, we need to turn this into charcoal and this into ash. So for the next step, we need to cook these logs down into charcoal. And I think what we're going to do is just sort of have these on a belt then we'll stick a couple of fans at this side and we'll just put some lava in there and that should do the trick nicely but i do need to sort out some power for up here so let's maybe stick a gearbox in there we'll bring that power over to here dig a hole down there which is where we'll connect another gearbox this side and i guess we can just stick a vertical gearbox there can't we now let's get this connected up to mains power Dill, what are you doing down here that is you dill what in the world? Well, we can't be having that. Okay, slight diversion. Let's quickly make sure we can get Dill back where he belongs. And then I'll sort out the power. So, Dill, yeah, you should be over here. There we go. Strange horse. At least you're still alive, I guess. Now, where were we? Power. Let's get our brightness turned up as well so we can see what we're doing. And I think if we just sort of dig in this general direction, we should... Ah, destroy the terrain above. Not what I intended to do. We'll fix that in a minute, but if we keep digging this way, we should break out into this area. Yep, this looks pretty good. And then we should find some power. Okay, there's power over here. Maybe I should take it from this side. And then we'll go back down here, and then get that connected up. And that should, hopefully, all be powered. And it's going the right way too. Excellent. And then we'll just put a collection chest at the end here. And we're going to need some barriers, otherwise bad things are going to happen. We're going to get burnt. We'll put a funnel with a filter on there to make sure that only the logs come out. We just need to go grab ourselves a little bit of lava. Yoink. And we'll chuck that in there. That should turn all of that into charcoal. There we go. And then we'll just feed all that into there. And just put a filter on just in case. And I think I should be sensible and block off the front as well. Because I'm a very dangerous person. And I'm, I'm only going to end up in there on fire otherwise, aren't I? Let's be honest. So what we need now is a bowl and a mechanical press, but we don't have any of those. We'll make one in a moment, but I'm thinking we could actually, instead of having this go into a chest here, we could just have it go straight into the bowl. There's no need to sort of store it in between, I guess. So let's go make ourselves a mechanical press. In fact, we're going to need a couple. Then we'll put the mechanical press on there. So that's going to give us coal. And then what we want to do is have that going in there. And then the coal is going to get compressed into coal blocks, which can come out to here. That needs to go into another bowl. But this bowl, we also need to add lava. So let's stick a pipe there for now, preferably facing downwards. Then we'll stick another bowl on top, another funnel in the sides, mechanical press on there. Then I actually need one more mechanical press, which is going to go here. Now, let's get these things some power. 
And what I do want to do is just put a receiving drawer over here. So that's where our diamonds will end up. Now we just need to get some lava over here. So let's just get this connected up. Okay, well, it's flowing. So hopefully, yeah, look at that. We've already got a couple of diamonds. Four, in fact. So let's just quickly feed all this charcoal from earlier back into the system. But yep, look at that. So we're getting charcoal, we're getting coal, we're getting coal blocks, and then we're getting diamonds. I like this. And the good thing is, because the tree farm isn't huge, although, yes, it's going to be automated, we're going to be getting diamonds. We're not going to be getting loads and loads of diamonds, but hopefully it'll just be enough to sort out our storage. They don't really have any other purpose. I, I just really want those upgrades, okay? But now we know the farm's working, we just need to get it looking a little bit better in here. How in the world did I do that? But yeah, it looks a little bit messy. We can probably theme this a little bit, make it look better. And, of course, I want to sort out the outside too. And then we need to sort out delivery of these diamonds over to the main warehouse as well, which is, I don't know how we're gonna do that yet to be honest although thinking about it the shiny prison looking truck over there that one does actually already go to the shiny factory and then drives right past so we could actually just sort of divert him in here get him to do another pickup and then reverse out and head back over but i don't know we'll sort that out later but now let's just make this look a bit better and the first thing i'm actually going to do is stick a funnel on there we're gonna add a filter for birch and for sticks Stick that on there, create a nice little hole, and then put lava in said hole. There we go. So that's going to basically mean that we've only got logs going through and everything else is just going to drop into lava. Good stuff. Now to sort out the rest of this mess. I started by placing some safety rails, then swapped out the floors inside the barriers with some andesite variants and added a big pile of coal and another one of diamonds just for a bit of theming. I filled this nook over here with some crates and then added in a staircase to upstairs, which is likely forever going to remain unfurnished because I have absolutely no idea what to do with it. It was then time to tackle the greenhouse area, so I swapped out the floor with some dirt variants and use the framed boards in some places just so we don't accidentally get saplings planted on them. I then made it more greenhousey by adding some leaves, flowers and vines as well as some additional lighting. Outside I added a few shipping crates, as always, and a selection of wood piles around the yard. I added some signs around the factory and then went and made myself a cup of tea to celebrate. But look at this place, this is looking much better. This is extremely foliagey. Is that a word? That's probably not a word, is it? Pretty sure that's not a word. But it's looking much more like a greenhouse in here, which is cool. We've even got one of these, I forget what they're called. A spore blossom, yep, one of those. And that's given us some floaty particles, which is quite nice. And every now and then we even get bees in here because apparently bees can now sort of spawn on these trees, I think. Because I have put a few flowers in there as well. So yeah, occasionally we get bees, but then they either fly off or die. So uh, yeah, they're, they're not here anymore. Sorry about that. I'm very pleased with how all of that has come out though. And we've got 142 diamonds, which isn't too shabby. The outside's looking pretty good as well. And I particularly like this sign here. I think that's looking very cool. And hopefully we've got enough space to be able to have a truck sort of come in and then reverse up and collect some stuff from a collection point that doesn't actually exist yet. And then be able to drive off and carry on along its way. But I guess that's what we're going to have to find out now. And the first step to that is going to be to go underground and then do some digging because we need to lay rail in this area here and well there's stuff in the way i've got it all dug out over there and now i need to play around with rails again i hate this bit it always goes wrong well as expected it's a right mess but hopefully we've got everything lined up correctly we just need to go grab ourselves a vehicle and find out and i think it makes sense to test with the correct vehicle so we'll grab this one let's just jump in the seats and see what we're working with. So, does it all fit through here? It's looking good so far. Okay, he makes it into here just fine. So we're smashing up that sign on the way in, but that's okay. We can just move it a few blocks over. We can get into this bit just fine, which is good. And we can rotate around here for the pickup. And hopefully we can get back out onto the main road as well without any problems. Okay, looking good. Ah, don't crash. Uh, what I need to do now is just quickly work out some stations. So we'll have a station here for the truck to reverse up to. We need another station as a collection point, which we're probably going to need to fiddle around with to get lined up. And to be honest, I think that's about it. Let's see where this is going to line up. Then our connection point for the storage interface should be there. Yep, look at that. So we'll do what we normally do. We'll just use some draw trim to get those connected. With the draw controller slave on top. A couple of item drains. And a couple of funnels. And then we'll just connect this one up. And if I add a draw controller here, there we go. You can see them. They've just loaded up into the truck. So let's sort out a schedule. We need to basically add another stop in here. And we need to put one in for the diamond reverse. But hopefully that should do what we want. 
Then we're good to go. I just need to get myself a new driver. Oh, I found a bee. Don't think we've had a bee driver yet. Come here, you. I'm going to do a quick stakeout over here and just make sure that he keeps up with his deliveries and once again doesn't cause any accidents. <laughs> Oh, there's been a collision. But wait a minute. I haven't changed their schedules at all. What are you doing? Why in the world have you crashed over here? Don't look at me like that. I've not even changed anything on your schedule. Why are you down here? You don't belong here. Let's try that again, shall we? Well, it's been a few in-game days and there's been no further incidents, so I'm happy to leave this as is. Which is awesome because it means for now we are actually done in this area. We will be back in future. We're still going to be needing to transport goods here. We're still going to be processing stuff here. I've got some big plans for what we're actually going to be doing over there. The next episode, we're going to be starting a new adventure, which I'm very much looking forward to. But before we leave this area, there is one more thing I need to do, and that is grab some name tags. Now we just need to find the boat. Once this boat pulls into dock, we'll actually be able to put a name on it. And I do want to say a huge thanks for all the suggestions. There were lots of pop culture references, which I did thoroughly enjoy. But then one popped up right at the end, literally about 10 minutes ago on my feed. And to be honest, I think it has to be done. So a huge thanks to Dalton Davis for the suggestions. But what we're going to be doing is calling the captain... Captain Zap Brannigan and First Mate Kiff Croker, which is, of course, a reference to Futurama, a show I loved when I was growing up. Plus, with this kind of driving, I think the name is definitely fitting. And once the boat pulls in, that will, of course, be called Nimbus. Oh, here we go. It's here. And there we go. Nimbus. Well, that's that job done. But sadly, that is all we've got time for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. We're now well over 4,000 days into this world and have four districts thousands of blocks apart from each other, jammed with factories, transport, storage, and more. And now it's time to make a start on district number five. Nope, stop that. So far, we've focused on wood products in Timberholm with our giant tree farm, stone products in Stone Valley Peaks, producing everything from cobble to limestone, basic building resources, anything shiny, a dockyard, and a whole distribution center at Viridium Shores, as well as main storage, plus a few basic farms over at our starter area, Beardgy Valley. And this whole time, whenever I've needed food, I've been coming back here. I've been heading over to my little farmhouse. I've been grabbing the veg that this tiny little farm makes, doing a spot of cooking in the kitchen here, and pretty much much just surviving on ratatouille and as much as i enjoy coming over here and cooking every now and then sometimes i just i just really don't want to so we're going to be constructing a whole new district that's going to be focused on food so that means food production such as meat and crops other resources that we're going to be able to get from animals such as the wool we really need a wool farm and automating as many of these farmers delight meals as we see fit but we're also going to need to transport those items to our distribution center and that's where the planes are going to come in so they're a little bit further down the line but i'm very much looking forward to that but with all this in mind that means we have a bunch of tasks to do today First off, we need to scout a new location. Then we need a new train station and road network to connect to the new area. We need a bus of some kind to get from the new station to the new location. And of course, we're going to need a bus stop at the new location. And we're also going to need a phantom farm to make all this work. So that's going to be fun. But the first thing we need to do is actually find a location. Because so far, we've built in a savanna biome. We've built in a jungle. And we've built in a dark oak forest. And I think for a food and farming district, it kind of makes sense to have a nice plains area. Somewhere where I don't have to chop down trees for a week beforehand so uh mm. We don't really have much planes uncovered, do we? Now, I know there is a big planes over here because, of course, our map did reset when we put it onto a server. So we have actually been out here. We know there's a mesa, there's a desert, and there are some planes. But I wonder if there's somewhere a bit closer, maybe over here. I mean, that looks like jungle, and this looks like birch forest, but I wonder what's beyond here. So I think that's where we're going to start our search, but we should probably grab our airship as well because, well, when we get there, we're going to want to put that down. And if you're fairly new to the series, you may not know that this airship is actually my portable storage and work shop contraption. It's attached to a minecart assembler down here and that means we can pick it up and move it whenever we go somewhere else. However, I have got so much stuff stored in here we have to do a couple of things before we can actually move it. So I have this backpack here, it's just a small one, it's an empty one, but what we're going to do is basically just take down a lot of these boxes, chuck them all in here, and more importantly, we're going to make sure we remove this waystone, otherwise things are going to get a bit weird if we try to teleport there. And we're going to chuck that inside as well. But hopefully I've removed enough data from this contraption, so to speak, from everything that was stored, I should just be able to pick it up now. And this thing has been here for months, literally about three months, I think. So uh, yeah, first time this is moving in a while. So let's do a redstone torch. 
And, oh, it's spinning. Oh, no, I didn't remove the lava again. It's fine. Let's just grab this. Grab all of this stuff. And, uh, mm, yeah, let's go deal with the lava. I swear I spill this lava every single time. But at least I didn't kill a monkey this time. No, 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 no. This area is going to look really weird without the airship. But let's chuck that in there alongside that and those. And before we set off adventuring, I'm going to grab myself more lava and water. Just so we don't run out of jetpack juice. Because this could take quite a while. We've probably got a long flight ahead of us. And as much as I do love this area, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited to go with somewhere that's got a few more frames. We've got a lot of machines here now, and the frames are getting a little bit janky. Let's grab some lava. We are all stocked up on fuel. Let's grab our grappling whisk. And I guess, let's go on an adventure. Oh, it's been a while since we've had an adventure. Well, I think it'll make sense to toggle our mini-map back on for this, so we can actually see a little bit more of what's going on. a huge area and i think i've made a decision and that is this area over here i think that's going to work quite well for our farm we're going to have plenty of space for an airfield it should be good and it's reasonably flat already as well so let's quickly head back in that direction and see where that is in relation to our current train track because we're going to need to go build a station just so the passengers can actually get off at that point and then we need to connect a road all the way to the new area this is going to be a lot of digging and a lot of road planning and yep this is it this is going to be our new home and we've even got a village next door that's nice but first things first let's get the airship set up so we'll just do that and that and that there we go and we're just going to chuck all these back in it doesn't really matter where they go because i never remember where anything is anyway and then we'll get the waystone back down and there we go the airship is prepped we can see our land now let's see where we need to connect and i guess the most direct route is straight through here but i have no idea what's lurking underneath here so let's go find out shall we well i guess it's not looking too bad this is our new area here i think what we can probably do is have a tunnel through the mountain have a little bit here and basically just connect a road all the way through and I have a choice. I can either go direct and build a bridge or two, or we can kind of follow the coastline, which may be better. I don't know. We'll see how we feel once we get started. But that means we need to put a station around here somewhere. So let's go take a look here and see what we're dealing with. Well, we're dealing with more dark oak, but that's not too much of a problem, I guess. We can clear out an area around here, stick a station in, and then have the road go off in that direction. And as tempting as it is to bust out the drill and just completely flatten this entire area in one, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> you thought I said I was going to cut it all down manually. Don't be silly. Let's just stick a temporary waystone down here and call it station. Or station. Yeah, yep, there we go. Station. And go grab our drill, which is this one right here. Now, I think what I'm going to do is just chuck this down around here somewhere. Oh, that's close. Jeez. But if we stick that in there, 100% definitely lock rotation. Stick that down. We should be good to go oh it would help if i powered the rest of the rail and it would also help if there was actually some rail and some redstone torches in there yeah i'm pro at this right off you go and that should do for now let's just take out a little bit more on this side as well i think that should be a big enough area we've got all the way from here back to there and we've gone back a reasonable amount i guess but it looks an absolute mess so i'm just gonna get all this tidied up we'll sort out the terrain around the edges as well and just Probably mark out where the start of the road's going to be, I guess. But if I can get all this looking a lot tidier, it's going to be much easier for me to picture how the station's going to look. And look at that, health and safety are here already. I've barely even done anything. so later we've got a much nicer area to be working in i've marked out where the road's going to go and just sort of made a little start on that but more importantly we've now got space down here to put a station what i don't have is any blocks to actually build it with and to be honest i think we only need a small station like this one here i mean we'll probably make it a little bit longer so the whole train can get in but i don't think we need to add too much to it it can be quite a plain platform 
This is basically just out in the middle of nowhere. But instead of making it all nice with the quartz and stuff like this, I think we might make it look a little bit more wooden. So with that in mind, let's take lots of spruce, take some dark oak fences for the bottom bit, and then maybe some dark oak for the back area. So we'll see how this looks, and if it's awful, then we'll just swap it out for something better. Now the first thing we're going to do is deal with the raised part of the platform at the front here. And I think platform lengthwise, that should be pretty good. And there's a train for measurement, good stuff. I mean, that was an extremely small train, but I think it'll be fine. Next question is, what planks do I I want at the front here do we want these i mean they look quite funky they're very textured or maybe something a bit simpler like that and on the main part of the platform we're going to be using these so let's just see how that all sort of pairs together and why is there glue there get rid of that i can only assume that's been left over from my drill contraption for some reason so what are we thinking Maybe let's go with this combo for now. And we're going to be replacing this bit under here with gravel. And I don't think I want to be seeing grass behind there. But I've got an idea. Let's maybe just stick a bit of oak behind it. And yeah, I think that works. That looks much better. And then for the back and the sides and the detaily bits, I was thinking maybe using some dark oak. Let's see how this pans out. Then at the back here, maybe we can use a combination of oak fences and fence gates. I think this could work, but... Maybe let's lower all of this bit here by a block. Feels a little bit too intrusive at the moment. Yeah, I definitely think that's going to work better for a smaller station. Let's sort out some lighting. But my thinking is once we've got one section of the station here looking how we want, then we can just sort out the rest. So for lighting, I wonder, maybe we can do something like this. Use some copycat panels at the top here. Hmm, not sold on that. Let's maybe try some stripped dark oak wood. We'll use a slab in the middle instead. Then put the copycat panels in. Get the lights on. I think that almost works, but maybe let's replace this pole. Keep the girder at the bottom, but maybe we should use some framed fences here instead and keep the whole pole sort of metallic. Let's maybe get a little bit of seating in. I think we're just going to use stone benches over here. We'll stick another light here, and then we'll see how it's looking. All right, I think I'm starting to like it. It's simple but effective. If we just mix in a little bit of texture down here, have some worn-out areas in the woods, maybe a few stripped logs as well, potentially. Maybe one last thing it needs is just a topper on these corners. I don't really like the way we can see the log there. Yep, I like that. That's going to work nicely. So I'm just going to sort out the rest of this platform, and then we can figure out where to put the ticket office and a little waiting room and stuff like that. All right, looking good. I've sorted out this half of the platform. I've got a few sort of bins and flower box type things in, which I think break it up quite nicely and add a splash of colour. But what I want to do over here is sort of an entrance way. I want to have a ticket office and then maybe a sheltered seating area behind it. And I have no idea how I'm going to achieve that. So let's just start placing blocks and see what happens. Small bit of trial and error, and I think I'm happy. Ah, jeez, train. A small bit of trial and error, and I think I'm happy with that. But what I want to do now is convert this side into a ticket office. So first up, let's get some walls in. Then we'll stick a roof on. We'll use some spruce wood along the bottom here. And maybe some brown mushroom blocks, because they were in my inventory. But maybe it'll work. Let's have a little look. It doesn't. That does not work at all. And nothing to worry about. I have another plan which is to try this brick bonded oak. But let's also replace the bottom here with some oak logs. No, that's going. Do I maybe just need to stick with what we built the rest of the platform out of, potentially? Uh, that looks too dark. I will eventually find the right combo. Okay, I think I've figured it out. We've used dark oak at the bottom. We've used some of the oak and the brick bonded stuff at the top here, which I think works quite nicely. Although maybe we need a bit more texture on this side. That's looking pretty good so far. And I was going to put a sheltered area over here for more seating, but I think I'm just going to do something similar to that. I think it'll balance it a little bit nicer. Progress is being made. We have a station. It looks fairly basic, but that's pretty much exactly what we wanted here. It is just a station out in the middle of nowhere after all and in fact here comes the train now it's not going to stop but lengthwise yeah it looks about right what i need to do now though is sort out the rest of the terrain tidy up the track and figure out how we're going to do the sort of bus drop off point over here it's time for a terraforming time lapse i definitely got that on the first take <laughs> I think this 
this is starting to look pretty good. It looks a little bit like a station that doesn't get used very much, which is exactly what we wanted. We've got a little dirt car park off to the side. We've got plenty of space for the bus to come in. And we've got a bus stop that is terrible, really, if I'm perfectly honest. But I know it doesn't look great, but it's fine. Around on this side of the station, I've sorted out all the track down the bottom here. And I've even added the sign there and set the schedule for the train that's going to be stopping. So with that, I think we're pretty much done in this area. Now we've just got a small road to do. And little did I know, but I'd soon come to regret saying that. Because I proceeded to spend the next 12 hours of my life across two separate days making a giant road. There was lots of tree chopping, there was terraforming, I had to lay down a track as well so I could get the mining train. But that meant I could actually dig out my tunnels, which was lovely. We've got loads of places where we still need to add bridges, but for now I just kind of put dirt across all of them. And then I made even more windy roads, going across cliffs, cutting down trees, making my own cliffs, and eventually we made it to the new area. That took forever. It's now Thursday. And this video was supposed to go out on Wednesday, so yeah, sorry about that. But these things take time, and I've still got a lot of work to do, because all I've done is basically laid the track the entire distance. If we actually have a look, look at that. Look at that big windy road that we've had to make. We're in a straight line, that's 2,000 blocks, but we've actually laid about 4,000 pieces of track. So yeah, a 4,000 block road, and it nearly all needs detailing still. We actually ran out of track at one point as well, so I did stay up for a few nights and made sure to kill some phantoms, make some new tracks, and as you can see, I've got a few stacks left over, but we're definitely going to need that phantom farm if we're going to be getting planes in here. But what I need to do for now is return this train. So let's turn it round, we'll take it for a drive, and I'll show you the routes. And as we drive down this route, you can see just how much work we've done, but also how much we've still got to do. I've got numerous bridges that I need to put in, I've got tunnels I need to decorate, and we've got a whole lot of road to sort out. And I have sped this up, of course, so apologies if it's a bit janky here and there. Now we're back at the station, what I do need to do is get all of this bit here connected up so the bus can actually sort of pull in and do its thing, and so I can get this train back on the main track. So we'll have a track go to there for the bus stop to here so it can reverse. And then we'll just get that connected up again as well. And we should be good. Hopefully, if I pull this train onto one of these tracks, I should be able to get it back on the main line. I just need to take this home and offload it. Then we can come back and discuss our next steps. Uh oh. Dang it. Every time. This much rail and I'll still always find a train to crash into. Oh, jeez. Now we've got more phantoms too, but to be honest, I need your membrane. Come here. So let's check our list. So far, we've found a location. We've built a station and road network to connect it. So I guess now we need a bus. And we're going to be sticking with the kind of 50s theme we've got, I think. So we're going to build a bit of an old school bus. So I guess for now, let's just chuck down a station, get it out of the way. Go to create new train and make a start. And because this time we're not actually using underground rail, I guess what I'm going to need to do is select the invisible bogey. That way we won't have any wheels on show. And now I need to figure out how to attach a bus to this thing. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is remove all the rail that we don't need. So we can just get rid of all this. And to be honest, if I'm going to build a bus, I should probably get some stuff to build it with. And colour-wise, I'm thinking maybe light blue would look quite good. We're going to want loads of framed blocks. And I want this bus to be usable, so we need very thin walls. Let's take these panels, as well as a bunch of other framed blocks, just so we're prepared. We're going to need some glass, but I'm thinking probably just the plain glass is going to be best for this. And I reckon that should be enough to get us started. So this point here is where the bus is going to be turning from, and I think I want that sort of slightly forward of the back. So if that's going to be the back of the bus, front will probably be about there. I'm not sure that's going to be big enough. So let's maybe go another block forward with the front wheels, build up a frame. I think that sort of size should work. That's going to be very annoying on the inside of the bus though, but whatever. Not really much we can do about that. We'll just have to work around it. Now let's build up the frame a little bit. Then we're going to make some of these funky blocks, because I think these are going to come in quite handy for the kind of theme we're going for. Though that's not the right block. Let's just stick the light blue concrete in for now. And then we're going to use these wall boards on the bottom here, just to build up the sort of side panels. But we're going to want a door somewhere, so maybe there. And then I'm going to put in some light blue panels for the top of the bus, just to give it a little bit of texture. Leave some space for windows. I'll do the same on this side. So next up, let's get some glass in. How do we want to do this? 
this. Because I guess we're going to want to use the paddles again here. Maybe we can use some panes to sort of curve it off a little bit. Well, I'm liking the shape so far. I think it's coming together. Now we need to figure out the roof, I guess. So maybe something like this. And I wonder if these are going to work to give it a nice curve. I mean, I'm not sold on the colour, but I quite like the shape. Let's just replace everything with the actual concrete for now, and we'll sort that out later. And at the back here, if we do this, we can put glass in these and then fill it in with slabs. Maybe we'll use a slightly bigger thing at the front there because we do need to put a bus number on it. Shape-wise, though, I think that's looking pretty old school. I just need to figure out what I want to do about the colour. I mean, maybe we could just have a band that sort of runs through the middle, potentially. Still doesn't look right, does it? But we'll come back to that because I need to figure out how this inside bit's going to work. Wish me luck. Well, it may not be perfect, but to be honest with you, I think I've done all right with that. The only sort of bit you can see through is if you're sitting in the back here, but that's fine. And at the front here, we've got train controls going in both directions, so the bus can, of course, reverse. And I've even added an andesite door, so it'll open when the bus pulls up. On the outside here, I've decided just to use a different variant of the light blue concrete. I think that works quite well. But we've still got a few more details to put on, as you can see. I need to sort out the back. We need to get some license plates on, some lights, and, of course, a bus number. So let's see how we get on with that. And there we go. Beard bus one, I think, is pretty much complete. Let's just close the door. Oh, and on the inside, I did actually decide to add a second bogey because I've realised it's not going to get round a lot of these tight corners if I don't. So it might look a little bit like it's drifting now and then. But I'd much rather that than have it driving through the floor and walls on certain corners. Now all that's left to do is to get it all stuck together. Let's just replace this rail. And then let's take it for a spin. Look at that. And to be honest, the turning's actually not too bad. Now let's set up a couple of stations. Let's hide the first one down here. That is currently a bus stop to nowhere. Which, by the way, is actually just what I've called this area in the meantime. If you do have a name that's, well, not too many characters because it needs to fit on there, then please do let me know in the comments. You know I like to have you folks name stuff when I can. And we're going to need another station over here for the reverse. So I think what we're actually going to have the bus do when it arrives here is we'll have it go this way first. And then we'll have it reverse up to this one here. And then that's where the doors will open. People can get on the bus. And then we'll have it leave out this way. Now we have a bus and we have a bus stop over here. We need to sort something out for the other end. And this is where things might get a little bit messy temporarily. But in order to put a station over there, we need to drive over there. So let's take a trip. Weird, I've got a raccoon tail. Anyway, so what I need to do over here is, well, eventually I do need to build a bus stop. For now, I just kind of need a loop just so it can go back. And one of the things I do want to do in this area that we didn't do in the last one very well is plan for the future. And I know I'm going to be having stuff driving around here. So we're actually going to be building a platform that's above the current terrain, just so we've actually already got a hollowed out flat area so we can do all of our move aroundy bits. And we'll probably actually turn this part of the river into a bit more of a canal. So we've got a bit more control over it it'll have some more steep walls on the side as opposed to just gently going into the river and although initially it's just going to be a giant flat platform we will of course put some terrain on it this is farmland after all we don't want it all to be flat we want it to look interesting but we're still gonna have to make a start with it being flat i think but now though let's just get a bus stop in and once again i think just giving somewhere for the bus to reverse is going to be the best bet so that should just about do it. We've got the main bus stop here. We've got the reverse one over there. And what I've actually also done is I've put stations here for the entrance and the exit. Because what that means, if we have a little look at our schedule here, when it leaves the nowhere station, it will then up its speed to 90%. And then when it gets to here, it will reduce it back down to 15. And that means it will travel nice and fast in between the bus stops. But when it pulls into each of these areas where it's going to be dropping off and turning around at either end, hopefully it'll go a little bit slower. Now we just need to find ourselves a willing participant. You look like a bus driver. Let's put you in there. Let's make sure it's going to go to the right station. Okay, so it's dropping off its passengers, doing its thing. Let's actually take a ride and see if we get where we're supposed to. So it should now go 90% speed all the way back. Hopefully it should now go into a lower speed at this point. Oh, maybe a little bit too low. But it is at least following the path it's supposed to, which is nice. So let's quickly adjust these. Let's maybe set it to 25 so it's a bit quicker. There you go, sir. Carry on. But it's looking like this is going to work quite well.
thoroughly enjoyed that road trip, and I hope you did too. If only the road looked a little bit nicer. But we'll probably get that road sorted in between episodes. For now, I need to build myself a phantom farm. It doesn't need to be anything permanent, but just something to get us some phantoms in the meantime. And speaking of phantoms, hello, buddy. So, phantom farms. I have absolutely no idea how to build them, but I'm sure someone on YouTube does. One quick visit to YouTube later, and I've got a farm that we're going to build. And it's this one here by Shulker Craft. It looks fairly straightforward. And to be honest, I'm hoping I can just build it here, stick it on a contraption, and then we can just move it to wherever we need it. We are, of course, going to have to remove and replace the water each time we do that, but that's not a problem. I don't see us needing this farm too often. So if you want to know how to build this farm, do go check out the link in the description, but I'm just going to quickly get this built and then we'll go test it out, I guess. And just like that, the farm is ready. But if we want to turn this into a contraption, there is one slight problem. Well, in fact, there's two. The first one is the water. We can't actually pack it up with the water in, so we're going to have to remove that. And the second problem is going to be when I try to glue this... You'll see how it goes yellow there? That's because this top section here isn't actually connected to the bottom section. And this pole here is also not attached to anything, but we can easily solve that because if we just put temporary blocks in these corners, now it's all connected, so we're all good. So let's just glue all this together. So hopefully we've got everything. Let's just test it out. So we'll put down one of those, one of these. We'll just lock rotation so it doesn't start spinning. Chuck down a minecart and then give it a redstone torch. And hopefully we can just grab all of that. Oh, almost. We missed a bit. Let's try that again. There we go. Much better. And it looks like it's about to start getting dark, so let's go test this out. I should probably make sure all of these gates are open as well. Okay. And then we just get inside like this, stand on the trap door. And then when the sun goes down, we should start harvesting phantoms, hopefully. Let's see how many we can get in one night. Well, for some reason, they're not getting trapped in the water. Maybe I've missed something. Yep, I totally have. I forgot to put all these iron bars on. That's why they're escaping. Let's try that again. Well, the sun's come up, and I will say it wasn't the best first night. We managed to get 15 phantom membrane, but then I didn't actually build the farm correctly. I tried to quickly fix it by putting these bars in, but what I've actually done is put this glass here in the wrong place. It all needs to be a block in. So let's quickly make a few tweaks here. So we actually need the glass on the inside here. Then we have the bars in, and that should trap them a lot better. By which I mean that should actually trap them so they don't just fly out straight away. But instead of taking this down and doing something while we wait for the next night, I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea, and I'll see you in just a moment. We'll see how the next night goes. Yep, it definitely works better. Well, it turns out if you build the farm correctly, it's a lot more effective. On the second night there, we've managed to get another 43. 43 in one night. That's a lot of phantom membrane. So I think what I'm going to do is stand here for another couple of nights, get some more membrane, and that means I'm going to be prepared in the future. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. And I have a feeling we're going to be building a whole lot of bridges. Last episode, I created a brand new rundown train station, a bus, and a bus route that travels over 4,000 blocks to our brand new area. Today, I terraform the new base of operations and start to plan out future builds in our quest to automate all the foodstuffs. But Mostly we build bridges. Many bridges. So over the coming episodes, we will be digging into the Farmer's Delight mod, creating farms, automating mill production, barns, fields, and a whole new delivery network using planes, which I hope you're as excited for all that as I am. But that does mean if I don't tackle all these tunnels and bridges along this road now, it'll probably never get done. So if you like bridges, you're going to love this episode. But that being said, I do of course need to do some procrastination first. It is bright and early on a Monday morning after all. Now I've been staring at this area and contemplating my choices for a while, and having done that, I've come to one conclusion, and that is that I really do need to prep the land around here before we actually do anything. And for that, I'm going to need my big drill. You see, what I want to do is actually plan ahead this time, and because I know we're going to be having quite a lot of infrastructure over here, that means I'm going to need some space below the actual ground level so that we can put in rails, pipes, power, and all those sorts of things. And that means I'm going to need a good few blocks of space below surface level. So what we're going to do is flatten everything down to this level here, and basically just carve out a great big chamber. Although I'm not going to be flattening the hills, I don't want to lose all of the terrain. And then we're going to put a couple of layers of dirt that stretch across the whole area, and this will be our sort of base level so we will still have some hills and things like that and i'm probably not going to leave it flat but it will give us the perfect area to work on and a nice hidden flat area that we can actually put our infrastructure in and doing this now should hopefully be enough to save me manually digging around too much down the line to add extra pipes and rails and so on so first up i'm just going to fill in this water area here because we certainly don't want this it's going to be underground anyway 
Okay, the lake's gone. Now let's crack out the drill. And in what may seem like a weird choice, I'm actually going to put the drill down here. And then we're going to do this to turn it solid because I need to change this. As you can see, this is incredibly tall. And I don't want it to be taking down the entire landscape in front of me. I just want it to dig out a tunnel, which means we need to make this drill, what is that, four high? One, two, three, four, five. We need to make it five drills high, which is there. So if we remove all of these and instead extend them out this way and just make the whole drill longer. Well, that's one mighty big drill, but it should at least make quick work of this. So let's just get it into action. And that should just tear through this entire landscape, which is going to be wonderful. Although it would appear I've put so many drills on it, it's not actually animating the drills. It's just kind of showing me the land disappearing, which is a little bit weird. And while we watch the land magically disappear, I do have a bit of a confession to make. I made a mistake last episode. And for that, I do want to apologize. But basically, the phantom farm that we built was not actually built by the person I said it was. They had stolen it from someone else. So I do want to correct that and say that the phantom farm that we built was actually built by Crimulus MC. There's a link to his channel below. So please ignore what I said last episode. And if you do want to make a phantom farm, check out the link in the description to the actual farm designer. I'll make sure never to use that other channel ever again. We don't like thieves here. <laughs> Almost an entire stack of construction wands and almost 100,000 dirt later. I've actually finally got a flattened out area here. I'm just floating around in free cam just so you can get a better view of what's going on. I haven't tidied up the edges here yet, but we'll worry about that later. And you may notice the river has gone as well, and that's because we're actually going to be putting in our own sort of canal system here. I just think that's going to tie better with what we're trying to do over this side of things. And the river on this side actually abruptly ended at the village anyway. So yeah, we'll figure something out. But we've got an absolutely enormous space to work with over here, which is absolutely amazing. I just need to figure out how we're actually going to do things. Because there's a lot of things we plan on farming over here, which is going to include all the veg, all of the meat, some of the other animal products we can get, and also crops like sugar cane, cactus, and so on. Hence the ginormous size of this area. And that means that over here, there's a number of things we need to build. We're probably going to need more than one farm, but we'll probably build one over there to begin with, and maybe another one sort of opposite. So we've got one for crops and stuff, and one for animals. I just feel like that's going to make a little bit more sense. Bearing in mind, I know nothing about farms, but then what I also want to have is a small sort of town area, which is going to be a collection of restaurants and things like that. And this is going to have two purposes. One will be to actually store my food supply. So when I need to resupply, I can come over to the restaurants, choose what I want, which is going to be wonderful. But in that town area, as well as restaurants, we'll probably have general storage for things like leather and wool and all the other bits and bobs we're going to get from the animals and sugarcane and cactus and so on. And then the idea is we'll have a connection from the town that then goes to the airport. It's going to be sort of a muddy type airport airport field on this side of things because it's only a small rural town and then we'll have a big old cargo plane flying everything back to our main storage warehouse which currently doesn't have an airport so we're going to need to build one over there as well so as you can tell we've got our work cut out for us here we've got some really big plans lots to do but as I spent the entire morning over here sorting out the terrain it's now just past Monday lunchtime I really should stop procrastinating and get these tunnels and bridges done so it looks like we have two tunnels three cliffs and four bridges to build we've got our work cut out for us and as we've actually sorted out the road all the way up to this point here which if we actually have a look at our mini map isn't too bad i think it's probably a good few hundred blocks from the actual station which is just over there in the woods but we've got a bridge and then a tunnel to do here so let's see what we can figure out i've got a bunch of resources together and i have been thinking about these bridges for a while and because this is kind of a bit of a backcountry route i don't want to have sort of you know big shiny bridges everywhere because it, i just don't think it's going to tie in but in saying that they are going to be sort of stone bridges i think going along here we're just probably going to make them look a little bit run down and a little bit worn. Over this first one, let's try and work out a shape here. Not the easiest to see because of the trees, but I think that kind of shape is going to work nicely for us. I just need to reflect this on the other side. The bridge is now solid. It's the same on both sides. So we're actually ready to give it some depth, I guess, because at the moment it looks very flat. And I think I want to keep this fairly simple. We're just going to use some slabs like this for now. Something simple like that gives it some depth. Then I think once we get some texture on it, that should work out quite nicely. I've been messing around with a little bit of texturing, just using a couple of stone variants, trying to keep it simple and kind of 
of, you know, there's a cracked area there on the bridge, for example. And I've tried not to overuse blocks in too many places. I do really quite like the overgrown moss effect we've got going on down here. So I'm going to keep messing around with this for a little bit longer and just kind of spread this throughout the bridge, make it look a little bit worn down. And I do actually wonder, because one thing I could potentially do is actually replace some of these sort of wall bits here if we just build out the back here then maybe get some walls in there. We can have sort of broken bits of the bridge potentially because that way we can just take a few chips and knocks out of the bridge as well and just make it look even older. But let's crack on and get the rest of this done and I'll bring you back in when hopefully our first bridge will be pretty much finished. And then we've just got another three to go. I'll tell you what, that didn't actually take that long to make and I think it's looking pretty good. And it looks lovely with the shaders as well. Oh, and there's the bus just in time. Hey, buddy. Oh, a little bit rubber banded. But I think that looks really cool. It ties in with the area nicely and it extends our road a bit further. Now I need to tackle a tunnel, and I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with this. About 20 minutes of messing around later, I think I've got a design I'm happy with. Once again, it's fairly simple, but it'll do the job, and at least it's not leaving it as bare stone, which is definitely not what we want. Oh, and the bus still fits through nicely as well, which is marvellous. What I can't decide, though, is whether to use these hive mushroom blocks or the hive sea lanterns. I can't really work out what I think looks better. Potentially the shroom blocks? I don't really know. Let me know what you think in the comments, because, yeah, I really can't make a decision. I mean, they both look pretty good, to be honest. But anyway, enough about that. We've got a whole lot of tunnel to sort out now, all the way out there. And a short while later, the tunnel is now done. But not only that, if we head up to the top here, I've also sorted out the exit here and this little bit of road just to bring it all the way around to here, which is where our next bridge is going to be. But first, I need to remove some of these trees. They are all in the way. Well, the trees are gone and we can see we've got quite a large bridge going in here. And what do I want to do for it? What do I want to build it out of? I have absolutely no idea. I might go look at a few pictures. Well, I've had a look at some pictures and I've got something I want to try. I have no idea if it's going to work, but if it does, it could potentially look quite good. Or it might look absolutely terrible. I don't know. But the first thing I need to do is get a little sort of metal barrier across the front of this bit. Wait a minute. There we go. Much easier. Same on this side. Then we're going to find roughly the center and just stick a little bit up here. And I want to try a little trick with these phantom rails. So if I put one of those there, then do that. I mean, that does give us a pretty cool effect for the bridge. Problem is, I don't think I want it to be double rail. I wonder. Let's quickly try something else. But that did actually look better than I expected it to. Let's just see what happens if we try it with monorail. So if we put monorail there and then connect that to there. Oh. One sec. Need to not be holding girders for this one. So I think if we just mess around with this a little bit and find just the right angle, we could make this look pretty good. Well, I have to say I'm amazed at how well that's working so far. But I've still got some work to do, so let's replace all this dirt on the sides with some of them. Yep, that definitely helps the underside look a little bit better. But I think it still needs a bit more support, so maybe we can double up the girders here. Maybe something a bit like that. If we just run along here and attach all the girders to the monorail. Well, let's maybe try replacing this bottom bar with a monorail. Maybe that will work a bit better. Got to stop holding things in my offhand when I do this. It's not working out for me. No, I think I preferred it when it was a girder, to be honest. So I do wonder, can we put chains in here? Ah, it looks like it. Although I can't seem to put one on top, which means I can't... Okay, well, that one can. Like, some of them kind of connect and some of them don't. Let's see how we get on. So I think I've found the trick to get them to all line up properly is to put the chains in first and then actually put the monorail back in afterwards and then they all connect right through. Look at that. So let's just quickly get the rest of these in and we'll see how we're looking. Well, that's looking pretty cool. We're making some very good progress. I'm still not sold on this bottom area, though. Let's have a little play here. Yep, I think I'm really liking that bridge. But now what I need to do is build a big sort of cliff thing here to actually attach this side of the bridge to everything else. block placements later and we've got a kind of cliff thing going on here i think i need to sort out the shape a little bit in a couple of places like here for example 
and maybe get a few andesite blocks in just to break up the flatness of this wall. But I don't want to go over the top because I don't want to have like one really highly detailed cliff in a land of not highly detailed cliffs. It would just look weird. So I'm trying to find a nice middle ground and I think we're pretty much there. Now I just need to sort out this side of the bridge, but that shouldn't take too long. I'm no structural engineer, but I'm fairly sure that bridge would not last very long. However, I do actually really like how it looks. I don't think I want to add any other supports down here. I did try and do it with some monorail, but I just couldn't get the angles right. It looked weird. But I'm floating around in free cam here just so you can get a look at the whole bridge. I think it works well. And it's looking pretty good from this side as well. Just look at it with the fancy shaders too. Oh, we love it. But enough of that. We've got plenty more bridges to build, so I guess it's time for us to move on. Although thinking about it, I should probably actually sort the surface of this bridge as well and get this bit of road sorted. Although this is a massive section of road and if I do that, I'm never going to get this video out. Maybe we should just move on to the next bridge straight away. But for this one, I think I know what I'm going to do. And that is to head over here and take a look at this giant viaduct we built right near the start of the series. I do quite like the design of it. It's simple but effective and it looks quite chunky as well. Which means I'm going to need a whole lot more tough. So let's quickly head over here. We should have plenty in there. Oh yes, look at that. Wonderful. And we're going to turn all of that into eroded tough. Oh, that's so much simpler with these new tables. So, big old bridge, lots of trees in the way. Let's get rid of those first. All right, so the first thing to do is figure out roughly where the middle is. So, probably about here. Which means this is where the central pillar is going to be. Then we can stretch out the rest of it across the top here. Bring that down a couple of rows, maybe three. Then I'm going to use some tough bricks to put in a ledge around about here. Now, let's see if we can work out some kind of archways here. Hmm, that arch might be a little bit too wide. All right, I think that's going to work a little bit better. Let's just reflect that on this side. I think that's going to work nicely for the arch placement. Now I just need to reflect this on the other side. That should only take a moment. And there we go, one solidified bridge. We've got both sides on. Now to sort out all the detail. And we'll start that off at the bottom here just by widening these. Then we'll crack out some girders to put on these bits and on these inside bits here. Continue the girders out the top just a little bit. That's where the top level of our bridge is going to be. Just need to utilize some of these walls, I think. Yep, I think this is going to fit in quite nicely. I just need to crack on and get the rest of this top bit in and then do some texturing and make you look nice and all that sort of stuff. Time for a cheeky montage. <laughs> A short while later, we have another bridge done. I've also replanted the trees down here, got it embedded in the landscape, and I think that works quite nicely. So that means we're three bridges, one tunnel, and one cliff down. Only one of each left to go. We're making some good progress here. And as we're making such good progress, I think now's the perfect time to get distracted and go and do something else. I need a break from building bridges. That doesn't mean I'm going to come and build this tunnel either. But what with all the landscaping this morning, the bridge building since, and everything else, I'm absolutely hammering it through my diamonds, making construction ones, and I've got a better idea. And what I want to do is make one of these, an infinity wand, for which I need a nether star. I mean, it's got infinity in the title, so I'm hoping that means it doesn't have durability. But not only that, it can actually place eight times the amount of blocks, and it looks pretty fancy. But to get my hands on one of them, we're going to have to do a few things first, such as empty my backpack, which is as easy as that. Well, it's kind of empty. That'll do. Grab my swords, grab a few blocks, and go hunt ourselves some wither skeletons, which means we're going to be going back to the nether for the first time in probably about three months. For some reason, my map's now showing me the nether roof instead of the caves, and I cannot figure out why, despite doing things with the settings. I don't really know what's going on here. But I'm fairly sure there was a nether fortress maybe this way. Hmm, maybe not. 
Let's just go have a little fly around. And if anyone knows how I can fix my minimap, please do let me know in the comments because I quite like being able to see what's around in the nether, if I'm honest. And this fog is ridiculous. Aha! I finally found a fortress. Ah! Jeez, I forgot about those. Ah, oh, they're the worst. You got me feeling like a fireboat. High in the sky. Oh, I'm back at the pigos. It's gone bad already. That didn't take very long at all. Right, let's figure out how to get out of this place. Well, that's the easy bit done. We're looking a little bit like a pin cushion, but we have managed to get our three wither skulls, which is awesome. Now we just need to make a whip. No, I'm not going to do it here. Don't be silly. But we do need to find somewhere to fight this thing. And maybe we should grab a couple of things to prepare ourselves as well. Now, what toys do we have in here? We have the potato cannon. That could be fun. We have the flamethrower. That will definitely be fun. We'll make sure we fill up our fuel tanks so that we're fully loaded. And maybe we should make a bunch of golden apples just so that we don't die too much. I mean, I'm not expecting this fight to be too difficult. It's only a wither after all, but I'd still rather not die if I can help it. So let's just make a bunch of these. I'm sure half a stack will be plenty. We'll temporarily not eat Ratatouille, and that way it should just eat the golden apples. The last thing I need to do is to grab myself some ammo for the potato cannon. Let's take the rotten tomatoes. Just what a wither deserves. And now I think we're ready for a fight. We've just got to find a location. And what I'm thinking is I might use this as a chance to explore. So maybe we can warp over here to the oil rig and then just head south and see what's down there and maybe find somewhere to fight the wither. Perhaps an unsuspecting village. Let's go exploring. The server is not having fun loading chunks here. I think our world might be getting a bit big. Well, so far, all we've found is a whole bunch of ocean monuments and lots and lots of ocean. And there's another monument right there. Jeez. But where is land? I may have made a mistake. This ocean just doesn't end. And this is the only land I've found in like 2,000 blocks. And this is no good. There's no village. Oh, well, I'm committed now. We will find land eventually. <gasps> Look at that. There's orcas. I've never seen orcas. Look at him jump. What a hero. Do you know where land is? really do with some land. That is not what I meant. Look at this. Nothing but ocean and bad chunk loading. Oh, hello. Wait a minute. What's that loading in? Is that actual land? It is. Well, this looks like a lovely place for a wither fight. And the good news is there's a waystone here as well, which is great because I forgot to bring any arrows with me. Yoink. And just in case all the bad things happen, let's quickly set my spawn in one of these buildings. Don't worry, Doria. Everything's going to be just fine. This isn't me just being cruel. I just find it a lot more fun fighting withers in villages. Makes for a much more fun arena. And I'm sure the villagers won't mind. Well, they won't have a choice, let's be honest. All right, I think we're about ready to do this. Cue the epic music. Well, that's disappointing. I think it's because of the grass. So let's, uh, let's just try that again. Oh, yep, there we go. That's the one. Let's go. There we go, we done him. That was only mildly chaotic. And there's the nether star, that's what we wanted. And the wither effect's finally worn off, wonderful. And the village doesn't look too bad. I mean, this area took a bit of a beating, as did some of this bit at the top, but in general, I think the villagers got off lightly. Thanks to your generous overlord. But most importantly, now we can make this, our infinity wand. But what I want to know is, does it take durability damage? So let's go down here and place a bunch of blocks. 
No, it doesn't. Amazing. I don't have to keep wasting my diamonds. That was totally worth it. And apparently if I hold control shift, look at that, it shows me what I just placed and then I can right click and remove it all, which I didn't actually realize until people mentioned it in the comments. So thank you for that. I'm sure that'll come in handy because I often misplace things and this one can place a thousand blocks at a time. So yeah, that's probably going to be very helpful. Let's get rid of these ridiculous weapons and get back to work. We've still got some bridges to build. sure how I managed to pull that off first time but shape wise I managed to get a sort of curved arched bridge in here and it doesn't look awful like I thought it would. I've surprised myself there. How does it look from this side? I haven't actually looked from this way. Okay once again not too bad it's got arches the trees are kind of blocking a lot of the view but that's probably not a bad thing. And now I've got the basic shape in it's time to do some detailing. After I got this bridge finished, I did record a lovely clip, and then I went and built the tunnel at the other end. Only I didn't actually press record, so I've got to do all of this again. But it's fine, because it means I get to come back and look at this glorious bridge again. I can't believe how well that actually came out. I was expecting it to be a right mess. And don't get me wrong, it's not perfect, but for something that starts as a diagonal and then goes into a curve, I'm pretty pleased with how that's come out. Especially with the arches underneath. Oh, and here comes the bus. There we go. Look at him travel along the bridge. Doesn't he love it? But as I say, I have also sorted out the tunnel over here. I haven't really done the entrance or the road and the build up to it yet. I've still got so much road to do. It's unbelievable. So we'll tackle this road here at the same time as we tackle the other sort of thousand blocks we've still got to do. But tunnel wise, that's looking pretty good and you didn't miss much with me building this. I used the infinity wand so it took about three minutes. But I think that works nicely and now it's in a position where we can actually sort out the tunnel entrance next episode. We can start marking out the roads in here. And more importantly, next episode we can get our first build down without having to worry about all these bridges. So although it's been a whole lot of building today what with making four bridges and two tunnels i am so pleased that it's done but sadly that is all we've got time for today i hope you've enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one bye bye now last episode i built a bridge a tunnel another tunnel and three more bridges i also defeated the wither just to break up my day but now the route to the farming area is looking a whole lot safer and more interesting i think it's about time i made a start over here i'm hoping that by the end of the episode we can have a build up that solves a couple of problems with moving to a new area mainly power, but I also think we need some kind of planning room as I have a lot to do over here and jumping in with no long-term plan is likely not going to end well. I mean, we've all seen Beardew Valley. This area over here is absolutely massive and I think in order to try and make some sense of it, we should probably start off just by getting some roads in, which means it's shovel time. Oh, I should probably repair this. Now it's shovel time. Almost half a shovel later and I think I've got a rough plan. What we're going to do is build a farmyard all around this sort of area. So this will be essentially like a big sort of parking car park yard type area. This will be the path up to the farm. And pretty much that whole back area there is going to be farmland. We'll build all the things that we need in that regard. And then on this side is where I'm going to build the town. We're going to have restaurants and things like that. It should all be lovely, lovely. And then this road's going to head off and the airfield's going to be over there somewhere. But obviously we don't need to worry about that bit just yet. I've just left the bus over here for now doing its thing. But eventually it will end up on probably that loop there, I'd imagine. But that's not important for now. What is important is getting this base of operations in. And I think it makes sense just to stick in a farmhouse of some kind. And in regards to theme, we're going to be sticking with the kind of 50s, slight steampunky weirdness that we've been kind of doing everywhere else. I, I do quite like that theme. I think it's going to work well for a farmhouse and a small town as well. The good news is we don't need to put up any more factory buildings. I've had enough of those and I'm sure you have too. But in regards to this farmhouse, I'm thinking this area here should fit quite nicely. And then we've got plenty of space all around here for more barns and things. We've got loads of room for fields. It should work out nicely. But I don't really have much of a plan for the farmhouse, so I guess I'm going to try and work out a pallet first. I've managed to scavenge together most of the blocks I need. However, I don't have that much dark prismarine. Basically, I need to go AFK, I think, over at the other place. The oil rig, that's what it's called. 
Either that, or I just need to check that the boat's actually picking things up, because, uh, yeah, we appear to be completely empty of shards over here at the moment. Let's have a little check down here, shall we? Well, we've got loads of shards here, so let me just check this and make sure this isn't clogged. Nope, that's not clogged. So I'm a little bit curious as to why things aren't making it over here. Something's not working. Let's go find my boat and do some troubleshooting. Well, this bit's definitely working, but I think I found the problem. I don't actually have the correct chunks loaded, so uh, if we do that... Hopefully that should work, and then we should get some more Prismarine. And the easiest way for me to test that is actually probably to go all the way over to the warehouse where the Prismarine is eventually going to end up. Because that way I'm not over there loading those chunks, and we can make sure that everything else is working. Oh, I forget how framey it gets over here now. Jeez. So I'm just going to stand here and stare at this while I go make a cup of tea. And hopefully when I come back, we'll actually have some Prismarine. Oh, that's a lot of creepers behind me. Maybe I'll stand up here. Well, it seems to be working now. I just need to wait for more Prismarine. But as I'm thinking of using that for the roof and this area's chunk loaded, there's no reason why we can't head back over and make a start. Now, let me think about this. I do need this farmhouse to be pretty big because, well, we need to fit a power station inside it for a start. And I don't really want to have another power station building over here. We've done a couple of them already. So if I can hide a power station in the attic or something, that'll be marvellous. And I think I want to integrate some kind of a farm shop in into the farm as well, just to give it a bit of character and a bit of colour out the front. So, with that in mind, let's start with just a great big platform. Maybe something about that size. And then we'll have a little housey bit off to the side here. Maybe seven blocks, about that sort of size. Something like that, because I do want to have, like, a living area on this side. And then using some of the tough, maybe we can have, like, a big area here. And I'm thinking where we have this sort of farmer's market bit out the front... We can maybe have, like, I say farmer's market, you know what I mean? Just, like, a few stalls selling the fruit and veg, that sort of thing. Nothing major. But I think having a couple of big windows with lots of stuff sort of out the front here could look quite nice. Farm shop. That's the word I'm looking for. We're going to have a farm shop. Jeez, got there eventually. So maybe something about this sort of size. And then this will be the big bit of the building, which will have the second floor with a power plant on. And the ground floor is probably what we'll use for our planning room, I'd imagine. Maybe? I don't really know. But I think we need a bit more colour in this as well. So maybe let's... Let's get some granite in. So how's that looking for a floor plan? I'm thinking we'll have a big tall bit here. We'll have the main building here, a little sort of offshoot there. Maybe I should wrap this platform around a bit more. Maybe to there. But I think size-wise for a farmhouse sitting in the landscape here, that should work quite nicely. But let's just get this blocked out a little bit more. So, something like that, maybe. Let's get the top layer on and see how we're looking. In fact, I think I want to get some beams in as well. And I think stripped is probably going to look a bit better. But I think I want some thinner beams on the side here. So let's actually use tough on the bottom. We'll make some stripped dark oak wood. At least we should. Why is that not working? Huh. That's weird. Why you no chop? I guess that just doesn't work anymore. I mean, this is from the create slice and dice thing, which is all about cooking. I suppose it shouldn't really be chopping wood anyway, but was quite handy. Not a problem, we can still avoid doing it manually by putting a saw here. And there we go, we're still getting strip logs anyway. Let's just do this. And then we can use the stripped dark oak wood in here, and we don't end up with the weird little pattern on the top. Well, they're thinking about it, that doesn't actually matter here because we're just going to be covering it up anyway. Oh, whatever. Let's just get this top built up, but I'm going to be using diorite for this, if that's not already obvious. And I'm thinking that kind of shape should work nicely. And then once the Dark Prismarine's ready, we'll get some roofs on that, although I might use something else on this one. I don't really know yet. But for a very basic shape, I think that's going to work quite nicely. But now it's time to start figuring out the smaller details, I guess. And I think I'm going to start simple out the front here, actually, which means there's a few more things I'm going to need, such as these Dark Oak cut logs. Some of these dark oak stairs from McCall's Bridges I think will look quite nice. But we'll take some spruce as well, just in case. Going to need windows, uh, maybe these. In fact, I think we'll take some light grey ones as well, just see how they look. And I'm going to grab a whole selection of framed blocks as well. They should come in handy. So if we were to put some stairs in there... Ooh, maybe the spruce ones will work better. Yep, definitely the spruce. And then I want to use these here just to put some sort of beams in. And then maybe the mesh dark oak trapdoor there. How does that look? Not bad, but I suppose this is where the spruce trapdoors come in. They always come in handy. And I think we can do this as well, which should mean everything is flush. Yep, that looks pretty good. 
So let's just put this all across the front here. If we do them five apart, hopefully I've counted correctly. Yep, perfect. Although I have to get rid of this dirt under here. That's going to annoy me. And I know it's only one pixel, but that one pixel of dirt at the bottom there did look really weird. But that instantly makes me feel better. Although putting trapdoors on here turns all that to dirt anyway, so it really didn't matter. Brilliant. That was a waste of time. And maybe I should put some more stairs in at the back here. All right, I think that bit there is going to work. Let's see if we can work out this front bit here. I think the first thing I want to do is replace this with some dark oak. And then we're going to double the thickness of the walls so we can get some decent wind windows in we'll make this bit stretch out although actually i suppose this bit doesn't need to be what we can actually do here is just get some more of this tough bricks in because we want to bring that upper level and then we can jam a window in here like this give it some thinner bits at the sides i do like that shape but i think i want to frame the actual window itself a little bit more so what framed blocks do we have maybe it just needs some of these sort of gentle slopes and then a few slabs I think that could work. Because what I want to do next is make a bunch of these. And then just put a sort of canopy on the top here. Question is, do I want to bring that down a little bit lower maybe? Yeah, I think I prefer the bigger one. And we are going to mix in some prismarine, but we'll just use the viridium for now because it's all we've got. Yeah, that looks pretty good. But for this next trick, I'm going to need to get myself some powered rail and a few minecarts and hoppers because we're going to do the whole flower box thing at the front here again, I think. And what we're going to do here is an old trick we learned from B-Dub. So if we do this... Get ourselves some angled rails, put flower pots on top, and then just put some stuff in them. And we'll also put some rich soil in front. And if we plant some seeds and bone mill them, and then stick a minecart in here. Once we stretch that across both windows, as well as adding a few smaller details, like these signs and the hanging bits and bobs, as well as a few melons, I really do think that ties together nicely. But before I get carried away too much with detail, I think I should probably actually sort out the textures at the top here. And to be honest, our prismarine's probably ready now, so we can even get the roof on. Hello? Oh, Beardy! What in the world? Stan? Hello? What are you doing here? Are you the contractor? Um, uh, yeah, yes, 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 I'm the contractor. The, the one from the agency, right? To, to restore the village, yeah? Um, yes, yes, definitely. That's me. Okay, good, yeah. As long as you didn't just arrive randomly on a bridge like everyone else does, because, uh, yeah, no one else has actually had a purpose, really, so far. They've just sort no, of been no, here. No, 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 I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to restore a village. Awesome. Cool. Well, I, I'm glad you're finally here. I mean, it took months, months to get you here. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I was busy. I was working on things. The agency, we had we had other projects, and it, it was just a little too far down on the list, but but I'm here now. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see you. I'm happy to see you. Do you know where the village is? The one that needs um, repairing? I, I, I have a map, and I have some coordinates, and I do think I can find it. Okay, good, good. Do you need anything from me? Do you know where stuff is? Like, do you, do you need me to show you to the warehouse? Because, uh... I, I would like to see the warehouse. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that means we're gonna need to go and wait for the bus. Oh, uh, wait for the bus again. Yeah. Oh, great. It's okay, yeah. it's fine, it's fine. I mean, there are, there are waypoints. There is a waypoint up in the airship, but, um... Uh, Obviously, yeah, yep, I'm going to yep. need to take you to the warehouse before you can teleport there. So, of course. Yeah, that's the train we want, Stan. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to we're gonna have to wait another six minutes until it comes back this way. And then it goes. Yeah, there's only a platform on one side. It's like a classic sort of in the middle of nowhere British station. Well, yeah, I mean, it's named nowhere. If I have to wait five minutes, but I can sit. Oh, my. All right. Back here. Yep. Mm -hmm. Here we are. What do you mean back here? Um, oh, this is Beardew Valley. You haven't been here before, surely. I haven't been here, no. I, I thought I remembered it. Stations looks pretty similar. Oh, yeah, no, it's true. They do. Yeah, I'm creatively bankrupt when it comes to stations. Up here, basically, there's there's a kitchen in there. There's food. Just oh, help yourself yeah. whenever you need whenever you need food and things. There's a few machines around here that might come in handy in some of the buildings. There's even an XP farm over there if ever you need XP. So oh, just... an XP farm? Oh, yep. that sounds great. I, I will have a look at that. Yep, so just help yourself. Oh, you arrived by train. Um, Yeah, th this, this is mine. Um, I, I have been here before. Uh, I just kind of hopped off and, and headed over towards you. Uh-huh. Yep. It's yep. suspicious. Anyway, right, so, uh, over here, this is the main storage warehouse. It should have 
most of the stuff you need, unless you need to create components, because they Fancy. used to be, they used to be on this wall, and now they're all in my bag. Oh. So, uh, yeah. Well, there, there's tr train tracks at least. Um, yeah, that's 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 about it, really. I'm, but I'm um, sure I'll be fine. I'm sure I'll be fine. But yeah, just help yourself to anything in here, and yeah, it should be good. Oh, great. Oh, I, that's weird. I don't remember putting this. Putting oh this yeah, no. Um, that, why do you have a waste stone here? Yeah. I've got one over at the. Hmm. It's weird. Yeah. Very, Activated oh. Waystone Stam. No, no, it's not. I no. There we go. Um. So you were saying? Yeah. So as I was saying, this is main storage. Help yourself. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get to work on that village. Um. Okay. Awesome. I'll pop um, in to check yep. on you from time to time. You know, make sure everything's coming along well. You know what contractors are like. I mean. Oh yeah. yeah. It took you two months to turn up after my request for the agency, so, uh... Again, very sorry for that, but yeah. I, I'm here mm. now. I'm here now. Mm. Okay, cool. Well, shout if you need anything. I'll, I'll probably be will over do. in the uh, the currently unnamed district. Um, but, I uh, will yeah, head shout over if there if me. I do need anything. All right, All right, perfect. Cool, thanks. It's all weird. Very suspicious. Well, what do you know? There's a Stam, but he will actually be here for a couple of months. I believe he's going to be building a village in this kind of area over here somewhere. Pretty much just to expand the world a little bit more, have something cool on there. And he's also making his own little mini series on it. So do be sure to go check out his episodes. I believe the first one is out on April the 11th. So make sure you go show Stam some love. And we should be seeing him here and there over the next few episodes, which is going to be nice because, well, this is my perfect world after all. And in my perfect world, the only thing I was really missing was some friends. So it's lovely to have Stam here. But anyway, We've still got a lot of work to do over here. Let's sort out the roof next. progress is certainly being made the roof's looking a lot better i've got all the details and textures in on the actual building itself but it's still missing a few things and i think what i want to do is actually stick a giant chimney on this side and then i want to steampunk it up a bit as well so we'll probably get some tanks and some pipes scattered around and i need to sort out the terrain plus i need to dump loads of stuff here but i think for that we're just going to make loads of fruit and veg crates but let's sort this chimney first so let's start just by marking out a rough shape. I think maybe sort of four wide at this point would be good. And I'm just going to use stone to mark it out because then I can see just the shape and then we can texture it all and make it look nice later. And I'm going to use some framed blocks just to soften some of the edges. I think that's going to work quite nicely. And maybe even just to put in a couple of janky bits here and there too. And at the top here, we'll just stick a couple of fireplaces with some spruce around the edge. Although I might swap out the spruce later, but it'll do for now. And we'll put a couple of these streamlined smokestacks on top as well, just so we get a little bit more smoke when we're close. I think that looks pretty good. Now I just need to get some texture on, and for that, we're basically going to be using some tuff down the bottom, so we're going to start with that. Maybe a bit of cobble deep slate as well, but we're going to have some mossy bits, so let's grab some of those. As well as some stone brick and cobble and stuff like that, so let's see what we can do. There we go, that's looking better with the chimney going. Now I just need to add a bunch of other details, so I'll bring you back in once it's looking a little bit better. And then we can make a start on the interior which as you can see is pretty big we've got a lot of space to work with in there that's nice a reasonable amount of time later and i think that's looking pretty good if we go and take a closer look you'll see i've not really done much with this area here and that's because the shape of this will be changing as we add extra i think my fuel just ran out let's quickly refill my jetpack but as i was saying before i was rudely dropped out of the sky i will be changing the shape of this car park because there's going to be other barns and things around this area which is then going to stretch out into fields and so on so there's no point me putting too much time into this area just yet but the rest of it i think is looking pretty good you may notice i haven't made a custom tree there i just kind of force grew a large one which is actually a pretty cool trick if you place three blocks like this on the east side of where you place a sapling when you bone mill it it kind of forces a big tree most of the time not every time but most of the time it works but it does look better than a normal size tree and i don't know custom trees and me we're just really not friends maybe i'll put a custom tree there i think it would look better but i'm certainly not going to be doing that today as we walk on through we've then got the path so this path just leads round to the front door, which is over here. Once again, I've just kind of tapered it off at the end here because there will be other stuff over the back. But more importantly, round the front here, we've got the kind of farm shop type areas. So we've got crates of resources, lots and lots of resources. We've got sort of beetroots and onions, apples, all sorts. I've also 
stacked up a bunch of pumpkins and melons and we've got a hay pile here as well because there is going to be a massive wheat field out the back here. And I've added a few pipes and things as well which I really think does help sort of tie it together. So with that, I think the exterior of this building is actually done. I'm very pleased with how this has come out. But now we have our next challenge which is to, well, we've got a couple of things we need to do. We need to first off put an actual sort of farmhouse kitchen in here just so we've got a small kitchen area. I do want this to sort of look like a normal farmhouse, at least this side of it. But this side here, that's a completely different story because what we need to do is, well, we actually need to add in a second story for a start and that's probably hopefully where we're going to be able to fit the power station. And that's also why we have this great big tall bit here because the power stations are generally, well, we need to have a full size one in here. So yeah, that should allow for the space. And then we've got this big downstairs area here as well, which is actually what we're going to be using as our planning room. And that's where we're going to work out all the farms that we need to build in this area, where we're going to build them and so on. So with all that in mind, I'm thinking maybe the power station is going to be our best bet. We'll divide up the interior. We'll actually section off the different areas. We'll get some stairs in and then we'll see exactly how much space we've got for power. And something else we need to consider consider is how we're actually going to power it because of course our infinite lava lake is nowhere near here it, it's miles away but because we'd already have infinite lava we could just steal a whole bunch from there using some giant tanks and make another infinite lava pool over here I mean, it's probably going to be the easiest thing to do, and it will solve our electricity problem. And the more I think about it, the more tempting it is, but that kind of feels like an easy way out. Maybe we'll try something else, who knows, but let's get some floors and walls in our building first. So I've made a start on the inside here and just tried to divide it up. We're going to have a sort of kitchen area here. This will be a sort of lounge slash dining area, and this is basically just the entrance lobby because, well, that's the front door. And this is where our actual sort of farmhouse bit's going to be. However, through here, we have a giant giant room and this is going to be our wall of planning so we'll have lots of signs up on here and I'll probably just put some random decoration maybe a few chests and useful things in here potentially some more workbenches and things either way I just want to make it look pretty good there's nothing under here this is just under the stairs but oh geez I blocked myself in but if we go around here and up the stairs this is where we're going to be putting our power station I'm hoping we'll be able to fit one in here and we'll make the rest of this look nice once we've actually got that in but there should be plenty of space it looks like I'm going to need to get myself some blaze burners. We are completely out at the moment, but you've seen me build a power plant before. So yeah, let's just go grab some blaze burners and then I'll get this built. Ah, leave it alone! There we go. We have another power station in. And because of the mod that we added that just allows us to pump lava directly into the blaze burners, we don't need to worry about having a sort of whole bucket collection pickup system thing going on, which is lovely. What I do need to do, however, is to actually get some lava over here because we don't really have that at the moment. And I think I'm just going to put a lava pit under the farm. It just makes the most sense. There's no need to over-engineer it. So I've extended that lava pipe down here. And what we're going to need to do is go underground to our previously dug out massive area which is going to come in very handy right about now. But we do need to put in a lava pit. And I think around about here should do it. So I just need to dig out a great big hole. And there we go. Now we have a giant hole. And the good news is while I've been digging that hole, I've been collecting lots of lava in tanks over at Viridium Shores. Between these two tanks, I think we've got about 3,000 buckets. So yeah, we're going to have to do this three and a half times. But the plan here is quite simple. We're just going to turn these into contraptions steal them and to keep things simple i think i'm just going to put them down above ground here because if we craft ourselves a hose pulley stick that on there and then lower it down then all we need to do is just get some power to that so temporarily i reckon we can just bust in the side here and steal this power there we go look that's going to start filling up the pits it's excellent timing because i need to go make myself some dinner so we're going to wait for all this to offload and probably do a couple more runs and then we'll be good to carry on hopefully with an infinite lava pit Well, it's the next day in real life and I've moved the hose pulley down here. We've got a full pit of lava and after winding this all the way to the bottom, we now have a bottomless supply. So we're currently pumping that out from here and sending it straight up into the power plants, which it would appear has just filled itself up. So if we go up this dodgy staircase here, which takes us back into our farmhouse, we can see how the power comes down. And up here, we now have the power station working at full speed. We have a backup lava tank just in case something goes wrong. And look at that, we are creating 147,000 strength 
stress units. And that should be more than enough for this area, maybe, possibly, hopefully. If not, we've got space. We can probably cram in another small power station if we need one. But now that's done, I need to sort out the interiors down here. And I think I'm going to make a start on this one here first, the actual sort of farmhouse area, which means I need to grab loads of things that can help me make a kitchen down here and some stuff that can help me make a lounge. I might even try and put like a small 50s style TV in. That would be interesting and a bit of a challenge. Not a lot of space there, but then I suppose TVs were big back then, right? None of this fancy flat screen malarkey. Wish me luck. Short while later and I think I'm pretty much done with the interior. Let's go take a look. So as we walk in the front door, we do of course have the entrance lobby. Not a lot of space, so we've just used a wither head and a few cupboards and things like that. And down here we have the lounge, so we've got a lamp, we've got some shelves and things like that. We've got a seating area with a TV. And in here we have a kitchen, so we've just got a couple of stoves, some cooking things that we need, a chopping board and so on. In fact, I do have a knife to put on that. So let's crouch right click and there we go. And out here in the lounge, because I've used the create seats, I can of course sit down and see what's on Telebox. Hmm, you know what this needs? A bridge review! It's a bridge made in a game with no physics that still looks like it'll fall over on a mild breeze. The steel girders have been architectured, giving them a curved appearance. If I built something like this on my channel, I'd be cancelled. Therefore, I give this bridge... Oh, wait a second, what's that? A brown envelope has been slipped into my pocket? Wait, am I saying my thoughts out loud again? Probably not. Carry on with the score. I give this bridge a 9.9 .9 out of 10. It's nearly perfect. Completely unbribed bridge review. Well, what do you know? We actually got a bridge review from Real Civil Engineer. How wonderful. <laughs> Moving on with the tour. Through here, we have our scheming slash planning room. We've got some of the heads of the things that we've killed. We've got a poster, but this is the wall of importance. So this is all the farms that we need to make here, at least the ones I've thought of so far. So on this side, I've got all the crop-based ones. These ones have got all the things we're going to be getting from animals. And they're the lists we're going to be working through in the next few episodes. No planning layer is complete, of course, without a giant planning table. So we've also got one of those. And the last thing we have in here is just some temporary storage, because I don't know where we're going to be doing the actual sort of main storage area yet. So I figured somewhere in the meantime wouldn't be a bad idea. And it just kind of made sense to have it here. And of course, we have the power plant upstairs. But I think with that, this build is actually finished. Or should I be saying this build is started? Because, well, as you can see, we've still got a lot of work to be doing around here. And I'm really looking forward to see how it all pans out. However, before we can crack on with more building, there's other things I need to sort out, such as this bus route. I do quite like the idea of having it just loop round, so I'm going to quickly sort that out. What I need to think about is the fact that although this one is running on Phantom Rail, everything else we're going to have running around here is not going to be on Phantom Rail. It's actually going to be underground. So ideally, I need to minimise the route that the actual bus takes. So I think I might be better off heading up this way, bringing him into town this way, and then actually looping back around the back here. And then that way, the vans that are going to the farm and around the town and so on, there's only one bit of rail that we're going to have to put extra signals on because, yeah, they're going to have to kind of do some weird redstone thing. But I reckon we can get away with it. We did, of course, do that in the last area with all the above ground rails combining with the underground ones. So if we just do the rail like that, we're minimizing the impact that the bus is actually going to have on all the other vehicles we're going to have in this area. And I think that's just going to work out a lot better for us. Just need to wait for it to come back so I can steal its schedule and then we can remove these stations and actually sort everything out. And maybe we should even get a bus stop in while we're here. In fact, I think we might do just that. We'll get a nice bus stop in. We'll actually sort of wall off this area so we can see exactly where the farm is and just do a little bit more to make everything look nice. And makey look nice we have, or at least we've made a start on it. So I've swapped out the road surface here for some cobbled stone and just mixed in a little bit of stone and mossy cobblestone and I think that looks pretty good. And just to clarify, that's cobblestone. This is cobbled stone. They're, they're, they're different. Just in case there's confusion there. I was confused to begin with. But as well as the farm entrance and the entrance sign, I've also added in a small sort of footpath area here and just added some bushes and a bit of overgrownness because all this is going to be farmer's fields, which we'll sort out in a future episode. And we've got a brand new bus stop and I've even used some of the old posters from my hardcore series because, well, it was looking a little bit bland and I don't really have time to make new posters. So we'll just pretend that these films were out in the 50s, right? But these were the two oldest films I had fake posters for. So that's what I've gone with. I've also fixed the bus now, so it actually comes in, stops at the bus stop, and then just loops around the town. And I've done the road in such a way that this is the sort of main road, and then this is just the sort of back road that's going to go to the farm and then link back around into town. So these roads here are going to be a lot wider. They'll be able to have vehicles going in both directions. But yeah, this one's just a single track road. And speaking of the bus, here it comes now. So this should pull in nicely to the bus stop and then open its doors. Yep, we just saw those open. And it lines up quite nicely with the actual bus stop. That's good. And regarding feedback on the lights from last episode, so 
it was basically split down the middle. Half of you wanted orange, half of you wanted the sort of sea lanterns. So I don't know. I'm still, I'm still lost. I don't know what to do. But sadly, that is all we have time for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Well, it looks like the contractor's been working hard. Good job, Stam. Last episode, I finally got the first build down in our new farming district in the form of a farmhouse with a power station inside. We had a surprise bridge review from Real Civil Engineer, and then we discovered Stam had made it to the world ready to restore a village. Today, we place our first farms in the new area, build a big barn, and place a ginormous wheat field with a tractor for harvesting. And I can't wait to make some big progress today because I've got some ideas for the tractor that I think will be quite fun if we can get them to work. But I think before we do anything today, I need to do a little bit of planning because I need to get a big barn here to put some farms in, I need to get a tractor shed down, and we need to work out where these wheat fields are going to go, which, to be honest, is probably going to be a massive area over here somewhere. I think I'm just going to use some cobble to mark out where things are going to go, but first, let's take a little look at our planning board. Because this, of course, is the board of farms that we need to make, and today we're going to be focusing on wheat as a main thing we definitely want to do, but I'm also hoping we can get some of the meats being produced as well in a big barn somewhere. But I haven't quite worked out how we're going to be doing that yet, but I do know it's going to need to be a fairly large barn for a couple of reasons. One, because we've got loads of farms we need to shove inside it. And two, we've already got quite a big farmhouse. And if we had a small barn, that would just look weird. Now the question is, where do we put this barn? Maybe we can have the front corner here. Now a barn about that size should do the job nicely. And I think once we've got that all built up, it should be pretty good to scale in regards to the farmhouse as well. And then what I'm thinking is we can have a small road that sort of goes around the back here and we'll stick down a tractor shed over this side. And a small tractor shed about that sort of size should do nicely. And then we can have like roads that go through here, a bit more of a sort of yard area over this side. We can extend all this car park out the front. And to be honest, I'll probably have some fields for animals over this side, just have a little bit of cattle and whatnot. And then a massive wheat field over here that the tractor will come and harvest. So that's the current plan. Let's see how things work out because inevitably things change. And I think what with the barn being the biggest building we're putting down here, it probably makes sense to start with that. But for that, we need to gather a few resources. Now, as we're building a barn, we're going to need a whole bunch of wood. We'll grab some sheet metal and maybe some of the stone pillars as well. They could look good. But I do want a big chunk of the barn to be red, which means red terracotta probably. Ah, we have none. So I guess that means we can actually use the Beardy Delivery Service over here and we can just send it off to go get some terracotta. So if we do terracotta, and I think 20 stacks of that should be fine. And hopefully he should come back shortly with what we're after. I haven't really used this thing since we initially tested it, but I have finally got all the stations in over there, so it should work now. And in fact, I've even created a list of everything over there that we can get and what station they're in so we can do it in the right order. So yeah, it's nice to actually have that working. Once that terracotta gets here, I do want to make it red, so let's grab some red die and to be honest we're gonna want to sort of balance that with some other blocks and i'm wondering if mangrove is gonna work take a bit of tough and some coarse dirt for some landscaping as well and that should be pretty much all we need once we actually get the bits back but while we wait for that train it's the perfect opportunity for me to go and make a cup of tea so i'll see you in a minute now we have the terracotta, let's turn all of that red. And we're gonna want a bit of strip dark oak as well. And last episode, I couldn't figure out why this wasn't working. And I should have just read the little pop-up. It literally says it's spinning in the wrong direction. So in theory, if I just do that, and that, then yeah, we get stripped wood again. Why it switched directions, I don't know, but at least it's working. Now let's make a start on this barn, shall we? We'll start just by marking out where the walls are gonna go. And then I guess what I should probably do now is just get it all framed out so we can see exactly how big it's going to be. I do want it to be quite large though, so maybe like five on the sides. I'm thinking maybe something along those lines. We'll have a nice big arched roof on each side. We'll have this bit on top. And then I guess we probably want to go up a couple of blocks more. Then maybe that kind of a roof shape on top. Well, I think I'm pleased with that shape. I'm happy to move forward with that. And we've just got an entire building to build. Let's crack on some building music and get going.
there we go. One barn. And I think that's looking pretty good. Scale-wise, it definitely works alongside the farmhouse. And we've also got lots and lots of space inside to put all of our farms. I mean, look at it. This place is huge. And we've got an upstairs as well. I ended up going with a scoria roof, which I think ties it in nicely with the main farmhouse. And then on the main walls here, we've just got terracotta mixed in with a bit of mangrove. And then I've added some pipes and tanks and things like that, like I normally do. I've also added a pulley system here, which can be used for getting hay bales up into the hayloft, which is currently empty because, yeah, I don't actually have any wheat yet. But I think if we put loads of stacks of wheat in here, if we don't need it for anything else, that'll look pretty good from out here. To be honest, we could just use them to hide whatever farms we end up putting up the top. But with that done, and also with the tractor shed marked out, I think we can probably crack on and get some fields sorted out. Now, I know this whole area here is going to be wheat. So, yep, that's going to need a lot of wheat seeds. And I think the majority of this area here might be fields as well. But this area off to the side, I think I'm going to save that for the animal pens. When it comes to the other veg and things like that, I think I'm going to put them around the back of the farm because I just want to have a big sea of wheat out the front. So, bearing in mind the number of seeds I need, I think I'm going to make myself a little system here. We'll have a dispenser. We'll load that up with bone meal. Even more bone meal in the top. We'll make ourselves a knife and then we'll just stand here and do this for ages and this should get us lots of seeds as well as lots of straw which is nice in fact if we put this magnet upgrade on then we should make sure we're picking everything up too well, I've been doing that for a while and I've got myself 5,700 seeds and I've just remembered about this little farm down here and look at this we've got another 12k here so we're going to take all of these as well and I'm sure that's going to be more than enough means I can get rid of this thing and I need to figure out how I want to plant these seeds but we do have 26 mechanical plows but if we make some more of those things we can probably make just a giant train that stretches across at least a big chunk of the field and then just plow it and plant the seeds automatically. That'll save us loads of work. Now, I think I've got enough of everything, so let's put this plan into action and see how we get on. So we'll just put a rail line down this edge of the field first, then we'll throw down a station here and right-click to create new train. Then on this blue mark here, we're just going to stick a bogey. And we've got 50 deployers, so we're going to do a row of 50. We'll have to just fix up this car park again afterwards, but that's fine. Then we'll stick plows all along this bit and deployers behind them. Some barrels to put seeds in. And I think that should just about do it. Oh, no, we're going to need train controls and a seat, of course. So I have a seat, but it doesn't look like I have any train controls, which means we're going to need a few more precision mechanisms. Let's quickly go do that. But hopefully, once we've got those in, this should work. Now, let's just quickly glue our wonderful train together. So I think we've got all of it. Now, I just need to load up the barrels with seeds, and we should be good to go. So let's assemble the train, set this to a nice low speed so we can see if it's going to work. Hopefully. Yeah, look at that. We just go a lot slower though, I think. We seem to be missing some patches. This is the way to farm. And just like that, we've got a massive field. And to be honest, I quite like the little patches that it's left. Now, if we move this over to here, then we should be able to carry this on across the road. I mean, we're going to have to redo some of the road, but that's fine. <laughs> Approximately 15,000 wheat seeds later, I think we're looking pretty good out here. We still need to wait for this bit here to grow, but it's looking really good. And not only that, I've also gone and wrangled up a few animals. I've been breeding up a few cows and pigs and things because, well, we want to make sure that we've got enough for our farm later on. But they've also got their own little pen at the side here, which I think I've fully protected and they shouldn't be able to escape. But they do seem to love this wool for some reason. In fact, while I'm here, it's probably breeding time again. Can't see any babies about. So we've done a bunch of building here so far today, but I think it's about time we actually start farming some of these crops, primarily the wheat over here. And for that, we're going to need a tractor. I mean, I would build a giant combine harvester, but seeing as how we're basically trapped in the 50s, I think a small tractor with a plow behind it is going to be just a little bit better. And hopefully it will fit with the area a bit more. So I've gone and got a few bits that should help me make a tractor. We're just going to see how we get on. We're going to make a nice red tractor, I think. And I'm just going to start building it right here in the middle of the yard. First thing we're going to need is some big wheels at the back. And I guess the back's probably going to be five wide. So 
also to there. Big tractor wheels. And then maybe just a couple of small wheels at the front. Now, how to tractor. I guess we're going to need some kind of an engine type block at the front here. And can we maybe attach the wheels just like that? Is that going to look weird? I mean, it certainly looks weird at the moment. And then I think I want to grab some slabs because I kind of want to have a block at the bottom here that's a different colour. And I was thinking maybe these pillars could work. I guess this back area should probably come down a little bit lower, say to maybe there. And if we think about the train controls, we're going to need controls going in both directions. So I guess that's going to have to go here and here. And then we're going to use a couple of these funky three-way corner pillar things because I think these could be a good way to get the wheels attached. Something like that. And you know what? I think I might swap out a couple of these as well. But it's not looking too bad, though maybe it can do with a bit more of a shape down there. But I'll tell you what, I'm not sure on those wheel connectors. I don't like the way it left that bit sort of open and visible. It just looks a little bit weird. So let's use stairs instead. Then we need to get a bit more shape here on the side. So maybe we can do something like that. Right, this is actually looking quite good. I'm liking how this is coming together. So I just need to tidy up the back here. And if we do something a bit like this, with a couple of those there. So I want to be able to attach like a chain thing that goes to the plow at the back. So we're certainly getting there, but the front here is looking a bit weird and still a bit exposed. So I'm thinking maybe what we should do is try and shape this bit here a little bit. So maybe we can use some of these slopey bits and potentially more levers. Kind of works. But the front here is still looking a little bit weird as well. Maybe we can block up a bit of this. Maybe like that. Yeah, I like that. That's got more shape. Stick an exhaust on top. In fact, just to give that a bit more shape, if we were to make a framed flower pot and stick that on top. Wonderful. Still a few more bits to sort, though. So in the center of the wheel, maybe we can use one of those iron raw iron blocks. What is it? Thick inlaid raw iron block. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we can just use framed buttons for the front wheels. There may be a framed button in the middle of those as well. Isn't a bad idea. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's get some lights on the back here. And I feel like this top area here is kind of missing something. Maybe we can just use a couple of levers and grab a chain. And we'll just stick that in there. I think for a pokey little tractor, that's looking pretty good. Now let's figure out the harvester that's going to attach to the back. So for the harvester, let's start with a few grindstones. This is how we're going to attach it. And then I guess it's time to crack out the girders. And let's think about this. If we want the harvesters to be here, maybe about that many, we can stick all these. Oh, no, we can't stick these directly to those. So I guess I'm going to have to use some temporary blocks. That should do it. And then we can stick our girders back in. Next up, we're going to need to get some storage in. So let's maybe make a bit of space here. And we're going to make some of these. The framed secret storage. Because that way, we can just disguise it as part of the combine harvester instead of having barrels stuck all over it. And then they should just blend in nicely with everything else, which is good. Although, actually, instead of having them on the side here, I think I might try and get a bit of shape into this. So if we would stick shoots there and there, and then attach one to the side that side, and the same here... We're going to need quite a lot of storage on here, so maybe I should bring it up a little bit higher. Then we'll get a few bits of detail on. Maybe just some random shafts here, because why not? And I reckon we're looking pretty good. So we've got our tractor, we've got our harvester. Now we need to glue it all together and turn it into a train. So for now, let's just stick a little bit of rail directly underneath it. Put a station down around about there. And is that directly underneath where we want? It is. We'll stick a bogey there. A block just to indicate that's the front of the train because that was a problem I had in the last area. And then I want to make this a separate carriage for reasons which will become clear soon. So if we dig out underneath this one as well, we'll put the bogey right there. Nope, in fact, that's going to be under the storage interface. We don't want that. So let's go one block over. Then we're going to need a few glass panes so we can actually get the two attached. Now to glue all of this together. And I want to make sure these are separate carriages. So this bit is going to be separate from the tractor. And we shall call this tractor. Very imaginative. And let's see if we've left anything behind. Doesn't appear we did. Look at us go. Awesome. So now we've got a tractor. What I need to do is work out the route it's going to take through our fields. That's going to be an interesting one. I'll see you in a minute when I've got something worked out. A short while later and I've got lots of rail in underground, which should hopefully do the trick. And I've also got a ruined car park, but we'll fix that later. But now what I want to do is just check the route and make sure that this is all going to work. So let's give it a go and let's slow right down, actually. So let's see how much of this field we get. Oh, a 
Okay, we've got a slight problem here in that I haven't put enough storage on the combine. And this rail here looks to be one row out as well. But apart from that, I'd say that's pretty good. We've managed to harvest a huge amount of the field. But for now, we need to sort out storage. So let's pull into a station. And I think we've got a few places here. If we get rid of these chutes, we should be able to add some more of the barrels. So I've added five more barrels. Hopefully that'll be enough. While we're here, let's fix this bit of rail. That needs to be moved over by one. And that should mean that next time it goes round, it'll actually take out this middle bit here because that just looks silly. But now we know the route the tractor's taking, I do actually want to put in some road marks in the field and so on, but we'll get to that later. First off, we need to deal with a little problem because we want to park this tractor over here in what will be the tractor sheds, but there's no way that harvester is getting through that gap. Luckily, I think I have a solution. That is to make one of these, a train coupler. What do we need? Just a flat piece of iron. We can sort that. Yoink. So let's make one of these. Let's see if it'll do what I want it to do. First up, I need to actually turn the tractor around. Then let's pull into this station here. But position-wise, I guess we can go back a few more blocks. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Now, this is where the train coupler comes in, which basically means I'll be able to couple and decouple trains just when it pulls into a station. I'm hoping we can actually automate it. So if I place this under this bogey when it's pulled into the station and place that there... Oh, no, it's all the way back here. So let's try placing that there. If we set this to four meters, let's just get this out of the way for a second so we can see what we're doing. So like that, that should be the right position. We'll pull this back into the platform and that should be parked on both those plates, hopefully. It looks like they're in the right position. So now if I do this, look at that, it's decoupled the tractor from the harvester. So I should just be able to drive off the tractor on its own now. Yep, perfect. Then if I put a secondary station here, we'll just call that Harvester 2 for now. We'll put another comparator there. And hopefully when the tractor backs up into this station, the bogey should stop there, which will hopefully activate this whole thing again. And the theory is it'll reconnect the Harvester. So we've backed in. The question is, has it connected? It has. Amazing. Then if we pull back into Harvester Station again and then drive off. Oh, look at that. We'll just test that again. If we pull up here, we'll pull into the harvester station. Then we can drive off. We can go park, and then next day we can come here. We can then pick up the harvester again. And oh, look at that. That's amazing. That makes me very happy. But now I think we need to fix these fields a little bit, which means I need to put some tractor trails in. So we'll just need to figure out where the wheels line up and destroy all the crops in this row. That's my basic plan. it's still got a bit of growing to do but i think with all those tracks in it's definitely making it look more field like and speaking of growing i think it's about time we sped that up and that means we need to add some water sources and my thinking is we can use these tracks as a guide we can just stick some water sources in and hopefully that'll speed things up just a little bit but there's a couple of other things i also want to do in this field just to bring it to life a little bit more and stop it from being a massive sea of yellow but let's solve the water problem first which means i'm gonna need a bunch of buckets and i've got loads there wow and we're gonna need a whole bunch of water to now, what I want to know is, can we waterlog framed slabs? Aha, we can. Excellent. So let's quickly run around and get this field hydrated. The fields are now hydrated and things are growing much quicker. There's only a few green patches left. However, I have actually added my own green patches as well. I've just put in a few bits of grass here and there just to break up the sea of yellow. And I really think that helps. But we're not done yet. This is a wheat field after all, and that means we still need something else in here. And that is, of course, a scarecrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a mod that we've not actually used much yet. And that is the straw statues mod. Let's make a bunch of these. If you've used the statues mod before, this is fairly similar to that, but... Look at this UI. We can basically do whatever we want with it. Not only that, you can also type in any player name and it will replace the actual statue with the skin of that player, which is cool. But uh, yeah, we actually just want straw statues for this one. They are scarecrows after all. We've got some preset poses here, but I don't think any of these are going to be particularly useful. We could start with Joyous, I guess. So I think that sort of pose should work well. Then we also want to turn on no gravity. But now we need to get him into position. So we can do this to raise him up. Then we can change the X position as well. 
Let's get him kind of attached to the pole. Well, I think he looks pretty well attached to the pole. Yeah, that works. We have our first scarecrow. Let's go plonk a couple more down. And there we go. We've got a few scarecrows in the fields. I think that's going to work nicely. I've also just placed a broken one on the floor here as well for a little bit of detail. I think that looks quite good. Silly scarecrows. But now the field is actually completely finished and it's pretty much fully regrown as well. Now what we need to do is unload this stuff into there. There is a storage system in there. So hopefully this should be fairly easy to link up. Let's just start by digging down and then we'll dig all the way over to the harvester. And we need to connect that up to there. So we'll get all of these spruce trims in. So we'll stick a portable storage interface there. Smart shoot there and the draw controller slave. And hopefully that's all going into the system now. And that would indeed appear to be the case. But I need to get some storage upgrades in here. Otherwise, this is not going to pan out for us. And to be honest, the seeds aren't really going to be much use to us. So we'll probably just put a void upgrade on that one. Well, that's working a treat. And this is all from one harvest. It's still going. And we didn't even collect it all because we didn't have enough storage on the harvester. So yeah, I think it's safe to say this place is going to be very productive. So storage is sorted. The field is great and our tractor is hopefully going to be ready for its first actual journey which means we need a driver and it's very tempting to use an animal but uh, well they're already going to have a purpose in this farm so I don't think we should use animals also driving the tractors and that means we're going to do something a little bit different and for that we just need to make ourselves a conductor's cap well, that should be fairly straightforward so we need a bit of wool we need a piece of string and we need a precision mechanism so if we give that to you... Oh no, wait a minute, what way around was it? Okay, so you can have the string, you can have the mechanism, and you can have the wool. And hopefully... Yep, look at that, a white conductor's cap. And using this, we're going to make ourselves a driver. A tiny little driver. And I can't believe it's taken me almost 5,000 days to do this, but here we are. Boop. There we go, look at that, we have a conductor. What a cool little dude. And we can put him here in this seat. And then we need to write a schedule. And that's where things are going to get a bit tricky because I don't know how much we can slow this thing down. I don't want it constantly going, maybe like once every two days or so. But I don't even know if that's possible. So let's have a look. And I think for working out the route for this tractor, it's going to make sense to go underground. So this is the garage. It's going to come out here, go this way. And we need it to pick up the harvester which means ideally we need to pull up to this station here, which is farmyard entrance. So we'll go there and just wait for one second. And then we need to go to Harvester 2. And that is this station here, I believe. Yep, perfect. So that's going to pick up the harvester. And now we need to try and force it to do the route over here. I've got a few signals down, which I think are going to help. But the first thing we want to do is have it go this way. So in theory, if we send it just to this station here, which can only be got at from this direction, it should go this way, go round, go around that loop, and then come down here and pull into that station. I think that's what we want. This is field two, genius station naming. And then what we want to do is send it this way and then it has to go to the right, which means it will loop around there. Can't go this way, so it will have to go this way and loop around there, that's good. Once again, can't go that way, so it's going to get forced out this way. It'll go all the way around and then come to this station here, field one. Probably could have guessed that. Then after field one, it should be able to go this way, this way, this way, through here. And once it comes through the gate, we need it to go up to here so it can then reverse in. So that's farm harvester reverse, and then farm harvester. Wait there for a few seconds while it gets detached. Then we want him to come all the way up around this way, over to this station, which is tractor park reverse. Wait there for a second. Oh, this is a long route, isn't it? And then it can finally back up to here, the tractor park. And I think the only other thing I want to do is just put in a few max speed limits here and there. But I think that should be all we need to do. But as always, there's only one way to find out. Off you go.
Well, it looks like that does the trick just nicely. And in regards to the schedule delay, I think I've solved that one as well. So once it's completed its long journey, what it's going to do is it's going to wait for 25 minutes, and then the next time it's 8am, that's when he's going to go off and do another thing. So it should r happen roughly once every sort of two to three days, which I think is going to be ideal. And the amount of wheat we get from one harvest is crazy. It's about 6,000, so yeah, definitely going to have enough wheat. And the good news is, that's the first one of these done. But we're not finished yet, because at the end of the day, of course, the tractor comes over here and it parks in its tractor shed, but the tractor shed doesn't exist yet, so I think that's going to be our next little project here. I've just gone and grabbed a bunch of stony bits. I think I want to make this look like an old sort of stone shed that's just been converted to a tractor shed. So it probably won't be anything too fancy, but hopefully it should do the job. Let's just crack on and get this done. And I think that should do the job nicely. We have our little tractor shed. It's a little bit empty on the inside, but we can probably stick something in there, I guess. Maybe some spare tractor parts and whatnot. I don't know. We'll figure something out. In fact, we could even put a tractor here that's like not got any wheels in it or something. Who knows? It may even just remain empty forever. I really don't know yet. But I'm happy to finally call the wheat farm done. And that got a little bit out of hand. It wasn't supposed to be quite that epic. But I'm glad it is. At least we're not going to run out of wheat. And with any luck, the tractor should be pulling off again soon. It all seems to have regrown. So maybe even in the morning, he'll head back out and harvest everything up again. The next thing to do is, of course, sort out all the meat and animal products. But that's going to have to wait for next episode, I'm afraid. Because, well, we got a lot done this episode. And in fact, it was a lot more than I expected in regards to the wheat field. But it's all good. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Last episode, I planted over 15,000 wheat to create a mega a wheat field, built a tractor and harvester combo which harvests that field every few days, and I built a great big barn which is empty. And today we're going to unempty that barn by jamming it full of farms, because we have a lot of stuff we need to produce. And I'll warn you now, these animals are not going to have a good day, but the start of their day is going to be wonderful. We need more babies. So if we come over to our farmhouse and have a little look at the farm's boards, this is the side we're going to be working on today, not so much the honey. We're definitely going to be focusing on the beef, the pork, the chicken and the mutton, as well of course is the milk, the ham, the eggs, the wool, and, uh, yeah, anything else we might happen to get from these feathers, I guess. I guess we'll have feathers too. But basically, anything that comes from the main farm animals, that's what we're going to be trying to get hold of today. And once we've got all those farms in, we're going to be one step closer to actually producing all the food over in our sort of restauranty town type area, which is going to be over there. And for the first farm, I think we'll start with a nice simple one. We'll do a wool farm, probably just in this section over here, I think. So let's go get some building materials and see what we can rustle up. And while we gather some building materials, it's talking time. No, I'm not. I do, if it, no, very well. We've just reached episode 50 in this world, which is absolutely mad. And I'm so grateful for everyone that's been supporting this series so far. You have quite literally changed my life, so thank you. And to repay that thanks, I'll once again be releasing a world download at the end of this episode, which will be available to all patrons and YouTube members of any level, so you can run around and explore things yourself. In regards to future plans for the channel, who knows? We are building what will likely be the final district in this world at the moment, as a lot of my early farms are not very lag friendly. I didn't know Create so well back then and the server is beginning to struggle ever so slightly so by the time we get this district done it may well just push it over the edge that being said don't panic the day this world ends a brand new world for season two will be starting up immediately after hopefully without a blip in the schedule which will involve some alterations to the pack some new mods some removed and so on but I'm not going to say too much just yet. That's months away. That being said, if there are any other mods you want me to look at for Season 2, do let me know in the comments. I have a couple of months to make this pack, and I want to make it an even more perfect world to play on. And I've learned a lot from this pack, what to do, what not to do, and so on. So hopefully we can hit the ground running with Perfect World 2. And then outside the main series, you can expect to see more mini-series, either solo or with others. Maybe even some one-off videos testing out some other mod packs with Mrs. B, such as Pixelmon, Vault Hunters, and so on. But let me know what you want to see. Anyway, I think I now have what I need to make this animal paradise. It's just a nice thing to call it, but I think we all know what's coming. So let's head back and crack on. So for gathering wool, I do have a plan. And the first thing I'm going to do is just section off a little bit. So about this sort of size should be fine. And I know normally for a wool farm, what you'd do is you'd put all the sheep in their individual little pens. You'd have shears, dispensers and whatnot. But we've got create. So why would we do that? I've got a much better idea. Probably less efficient, but it's going to be a lot more fun. So first off, let's just stick up a wall here. I want to completely separate this area. And we'll stick a fence up the front. That should be big enough. 
And here is my plan. So if you imagine these are all the sheep, they're just milling around, one in each colour, so we'll have 16 sheep in here. If we were to have deployers at that level there, and they were holding shears, then they'd be shearing the sheep as they munch. But of course, I don't want to cover the whole ceiling in deployers, so I think what we're going to do is just stick in a line across the back here. Let's quickly get that in. In fact, I should probably actually pull that forward by a row. So I guess we're going to need to put a wall at the back here as well, which is going to make the pen a little bit smaller, but it'll still be absolutely fine. And what we're going to want this to do is to basically go backwards and forwards shearing the sheep. To make that happen, we're going to use a gantry and we'll stick a gantry carriage there. So what we're also going to need on here is, of course, an unloading system. And I think we can probably jam that at the back here. So if we were to do that and that and we'll get that hooked up to the draw system later but we're also going to need some storage up here to well to store the wool temporarily before it gets offloaded but also to hold lots and lots of shears for these guys and then we can just block up the rest of this wall i think so in theory that should all work but now we need to figure out power for this thing we'll extend the gantry we'll put the gearbox in and now i'm gonna sit here and fiddle around with the power for a while and it's probably gonna be quite boring to watch so i'll bring you back in once this system's looking a little bit better but at least the core of the system's done because once we do have all of this powered and this connected up to the storage thing we should just be able to send this backwards and forwards really shearing all of our sheep but i guess we'll find that out in just a moment so i think i've got it all working i've just used these redstone contacts here and then i've got a pulse repeater above this block and that basically just times it so every 30 seconds it will set off this thing which is the sequenced gear shift and that should fire yep there we go that's just fired so that's now going to go all the way to the front here wait for a moment and then it's going to go all the way back and it'll do that every 30 seconds seconds or so. I've also loaded up these barrels with shears. All of the deployers are set with shears. Although, yeah, it's sort of, they disappear when it moves, which is a bit weird, but at least it works. So what I need to do now is make this good for sheep, which means getting rid of all this coarse dirt for a start. So that's that layer gone, but I'm also going to remove the layer below because there's a small trick we can do with grass to make it grow a little bit quicker because we want to make sure that the sheep have always got plenty of grass over here to munch on. What we're going to do as well as putting grass at this level, of course, for the sheep to actually eat, I'm also going to put it on a lower level just here. So if we fill all of this up and then fill up the top layer, what will happen is the grass will actually sort of jump this air gap and it should, hopefully, keep the grass up here fully grown as well, or at least give it more opportunities to spread, I should say. But I've also got it under the fence here, which the sheep can't actually eat, so it'll always grow out from this side. And let's just mess this up a little bit just to make it look a bit more interesting. There we go. Now let's go get ourselves some sheep. And we'll only take a few from out here. I do want to leave some roaming around in the fields, so let's just grab five or six. In fact, there's not as many as I thought. Let's just take the four for now. We'll drag all of these into their lovely new home. And oh, look at this. Are they going to get sheared? Yes, they are. Look at that. Ha, wonderful. It works. And I also want to make sure the sheep have got some light in here. So let's sort out their pen a little bit. Once again, this is going to help the grass grow. Let's just sort out our brightness settings quickly so we can actually see how bright it is in here. Well, not very, I'd say. There we go. That should do to give them a little bit of light. Although thinking about it, I should probably have somewhere for that wool to actually go. Because I think all these drawers are locked at the moment. Yes, they are. So we're only doing white and grey currently. So let's get those coming in. And I need to breed these sheep because we actually need 16 in here and there's only four currently. And then we're going to need to dye them all of the different colours, but we can do that later. For now, I think I want to make this place look a little bit more barn-like. So we're going to mess up the walls a little bit and just, well, generally make it look a little bit more fitting, I think. We're not far off. And I think with that, we're just about done. I've added a bit more lighting, some hay bales and a few bushes and things like that. But I've also got 16 sheep and we have all of the different colours now. Wait a minute, we've got two cyan. And no light blue. Or is that a cyan and that a light blue and they just look really similar? I think they are actually different. But what we need to do is get this turned back on. So let me find a shaft. There's one. And if we push this button, there we go. It should set the machine off. And that should shear them all. Look at it go. Well, it has missed a couple that seem to have dodged out the way somehow. But this thing is set to fire every 10 seconds now, so on the very next run, it's caught the pink one anyway. This is good. I just need to open up a whole bunch more of these drawers for all the extra wool. And a quick bit of reorganising. We're all good. Although I should probably put some drawer upgrades on these. So that's the first farm in. Now let's move on to the next one. And I think over in this spot here, we're going to milk some cows. The first thing we're going to do is just section off a small area here. So we've got somewhere to, well, to store the milk mainly. But also we're going to need somewhere to put lots of the sort of mechanics for the contraptions. And this area here should work just fine for that. 
So now we've got a nice big space here. Let's see if we can work this out. I think with this farm, we're once again going to use a gantry. So if we just put this across the back here, and I might need to move position on some of these things. I'm just kind of guessing at the moment. Stick a gantry shaft in there and a deployer there. In the wall, we're going to need a storage interface and then somewhere to get that dropped off. For power, we'll just bring that out there and sort that out later. But now we need to do some experiments because I believe I can use this to milk the cows if we give it buckets and we're going to need to kind of somehow cycle the buckets around, I guess. I, I don't really know. To be honest, we might just end up with a line of deployers, but let's see if we can get this to work. Let's just build a small cage where the cow's going to stand and go get ourselves a cow. Come on, you. You're about to have a wonderful time in a cage for the rest of your life. So that's it. You come up here. Everything's fine. In fact, if I was holding wheat, there we go. We'll get you blocked in. We're going to grab ourselves a smart shoot, and we'll attach that underneath this. And I'm going to dig out this layer here. Let's stick a barrel on there as well. Super glue this little contraption together. And we'll filter for buckets of milk on that. Load this up with buckets. Make sure he's got a bucket filter set. And now let's just get some power to this thing and try it out. So that should do the trick if I press that. Well, it kind of worked. It did gather some milk, but it put it in the barrel. So maybe what we can do is just not bother with that thing at the bottom. I think we'll be okay without it. But if we hit that button again, it should milk the cow on the way past. And again on the way back. So we can then just extend this system all the way down here. And then we'll just put the smart chute down here with the milk filter on it. So it'll only actually pull the full buckets of milk out of there. That should work nicely. Although it would work better if I'd actually glued the storage interface to it, I think. There we go. We're getting the milk dropped off. Now he's moving away. He's going to go get more milk. But what we now need to do is make sure that this thing is being reloaded with buckets. So we actually need to be emptying this milk probably into some item drains and then just cycling the buckets back around into the machine somehow. Give me a minute to work that out. And a few minutes later, I think I've got everything worked out. So we've just got a couple of item drains here and this offloads milk when the machine pulls in. It empties them all into this storage drawer controller. That's then connected underground all the way over to this side where we've just added another storage interface here. So when this thing is at that side, it will load up on buckets. And when it's at that side, it'll offload the milk and the buckets go back there. Very simple. I'm then just pumping the milk out and into these vats over here for now. I've also set up a sequence gear shift here too, so if we press that to activate it, it now should just continually go backwards and forwards. And in the meantime, I need to sort out some cows for over here and design a better looking cage. That does not look fun. But we're definitely looking a little bit better. I think the wooden fences instead of the cages is a lot better looking. And we've got enough here for how many was that? Seven cows? That'll be plenty. But I've also penned off the front bit here just so we can have some free roam cows just to make it look a bit nicer. And yeah, I do need to sort out the roof still. I need to sort out the ground. And of course, I need to get the cows in. So let's quickly get that sorted. Okay, that looks sinister. Oh, there he is. Hello. Hello there. Um, what are you up to here? Uh, milking cows. It, okay. Mm -hmm. It's yep. fine. Look, Looks... they're, all, they're all just getting locked in their own little pens, and then and then the milking machine comes along, and they all get milked. Everything's fine. The milking machine comes. You have. Oh, oh boy. Wait, is that how this works as well? Is there a? Ma oh my god. Well, yeah, this this is the the, the wool farm, obviously, as opposed to. I mean, to... that's I I would say that's very humane for being a Minecraft wool farm. I, that's what I said. I mean, you you're giving them a good life here. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, don't come back later once I've done the other side of the uh, of the barn. But for now, okay, mm -hmm. it's lovely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Uh, anyways, I got your message about um, wanting to see the progress on the village, and I, I yes. have done some progress. So you wanna head over there? Oh, yes, I'd love to. So does that mean we're getting the bus again? Um, it, it means we're getting the bus again, Bertie. Four minutes. That's not bad. Oh, that's not terrible. No, it's not terrible. No, no, okay, yeah, again, flashbacks. <laughs> right, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not standing anywhere near there. <laughs> no, I'm, neither. I'm just gonna stand here in silence for the next four minutes. Yep. <clears throat> oh, here it is. About time. I, I'll let you know when we um, got to um, disembark on the train. I mean, I'm a little bit concerned um, about the travel plans for this village. Um, you say you are going to build a station, but currently we just have to yeet ourselves off the, the train. The, pla the, 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 the station is in the plans. Yes. Right. Um, it's okay. the next project. Um, oh, exciting. Oh, 
I'm getting shot at here. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's, there's bandits along some parts of the track. It's fine. Just ignore the bandits. Some parts of the tracks. That's that's literally next to the city. Yes, some parts of the track next to the city also have... That was another mm -hmm. bandit. Did you hear oh, that? Oh, that was another bandit. Yeah, yep. yeah, that was another bandit. It's uh -huh. no longer a bandit. No, no, no. So, I mean, am I supposed to be getting ready to jump off or...? Um, well, I, I feel... I, I, I Honestly, I haven't taken this route yet, but... I I'm pretty familiar with the surroundings. I will. Oh, that was another bandit. Yeah, yeah, more bandits. Surely we should be. Getting... I don't remember the village being this far away from mm. nowhere. Oh no! I well, I found it this far away. Right. That's a little bit more concerning. Okay. Um, I I would get ready uh, round oh. about now. Oh, oh okay. Boy. Okay. Oh. Oh. Jeez. Oh boy. Oh. I'm Not stuck. Yet. Um, I'm stuck. Ah, I'm off. Ah, oh, bandits! Really? Oh no! Ah, there's bandits! Stan, come back! Oh dear. Well, apparently Stan nailed it. Oh, I see. There's like a weird little junction. No, I, I nailed I'm it. Coming. I'm coming! I landed coming. right here. <laughs> you landed right there. I was I... stuck for ages and then I just got spat out here. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I, I, I got I spat out it. back there. It was not good. Oh, well, this is where I, I, I traversed into the terrain uh, to find it. Right. Um, so I, okay. I parked here. Yeah, I don't think this is the uh, the, the village that uh, I discussed with the agency. But then it took them so long to send you anyway. I'm not even surprised. Oh, don't mind if I do. Stam, I've got a confession to make. What? It, well, you've got I Komodo dragons that. around here? Apparently. Good to know. Right, I'm going to stay clear of that. But yeah, I do have a bit of a confession to make. Um, mm -hmm. I, ha I have already been here. I, 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 ha I spied on you. At the end of the, the, the previous episode or the episode before that, I had a little look. Oh my god! I stayed in the trees though. I stayed so uh -huh. I I already mm -hmm. I already knew that you were building over here, and it wasn't what was in the contract, Stan. I already knew all of this, but what, what you were doing looked so beautiful. I just left you to it. Okay, well, you could have told me. So it doesn't have a proper place to uh, enter it yet, but we can just head down here to um, what would be to what will be a um, a dock. It's, okay. uh, it's missing oh, so the water in... element. I was going to say, there isn't a river. I'm putting in the river, yes. Um, I'm putting in a river. I mean, it I'm plans. a contractor. Ooh. And um, a river, I feel like it fits. Yeah, and uh, like this, is, this is the manor. That is wonderful. I'm just going to get a, a, a wider field view. Oh. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. I then spent some time hanging out with Stam as he showed me the awesome interior of his house, but I don't want to spoil it for you. So go check out his episode one link below if you want to check it out. For now, we've still got more cows to sort. The area for the cows is now complete, and look at that, they look very happy. We've got a few free roaming out the front, and the ones at the back are, of course, being milked, and we're collecting lots and lots of milk over here, which is good, because we're going to need a lot of that in future. I've also just tidied up this area a bit, sorted out the ceilings, and in this area here, we've just basically got a little shut-off area. We don't really need access to this, but I wanted to keep access just in case. I thought, I do want to block up that hole. There we go. But now we've done all the nicey-nicey bits, we need to get on to the slightly more grim side, where we actually need to harvest the meat from the sheep, the cows, the pigs, and, of course, the chickens. So I guess I need to come up with a plan on how to do that. So I just came to refill the lava and water for my jetpacks, and uh, we seem to have a slight problem over here. We've got a bit of a bee apocalypse going on. They are literally everywhere. I mean, look at this. Oh, and they've filled out this forest as well. This is ridiculous. Oh, and it just goes on. Uh-oh. Oh, there are so many bees. No wonder the server's struggling. Oh my days, what have I done? Look at that. Okay, I'm going to have to do something about this, but I don't really know what. I think the first thing is to turn off my diamond farm, because this is clearly where they're all coming from. And maybe if I remove all the flowers in here, it will stop spawning bees when the trees grow, because I think that the hives or the nests only happen if there's, like, flowers near the birch trees. So hopefully that will solve the problem of more bees coming, but how do we deal with these? Might have to call in some reinforcements here. This is going to take forever. Well, 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 if it isn't the Iron Trout. They call me the Iron Trout. You called. 100% success, right? I'm here. Mm-hmm. 
got a bit of a, a, a pest problem. So, obviously, my, my go-to for a solution was to find the biggest pest I know. I mean, I consider myself strong, brave, noble, reliable. Um, uh-huh. I mean, what more could you ask for? Yeah, right, okay. We'll, 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 we'll see what happens. Do you want me to show you what the problem is? Yeah, I mean, I'm not too worried about what it is. It could literally be anything, but... Uh... Oh, it's, um, it's, it's a doozy. Well, basically, if you come over this way a little bit... You'll see there's a few a few bees around. Bees? Bees are the problem. A few? Uh, yeah, if uh, it get, come this way. Keep keep going this way. But uh, You said a few? I can see a, a, a few hundred? Yeah, I don't know where it ends. Um over here maybe? Um, I think this looks like the far side. So you want help taking out hundreds of bees? Yes. Yeah, it seemed like the sort of thing you'd enjoy. Oh. Um, yep. And the good thing is, if you get them in one, they don't get angry. Oh, I didn't get it oh, in well, one. Oh, that's gone well, isn't it? Oh, oh no. Mr. B! <laughs> I keep missing. <laughs> yeah, so... Help! I'm trying! I mean, the good thing is, the ones that are hitting me are also dying, right? Ow. <laughs> That's not, not what I'm not even trying to do it. Montage? Montage. Oh my god, there's literally like a hundred bees. <laughs> Mr. B. No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Well then, Iron Trout, I think that's a successful mission. Um, I, I have a lot of bee heads in my inventory. Yeah, me too. I mean... Yeah. Too, take too, these two. Too, too, too many, some might say. Too many. In fact, how many bees did I actually kill then? Bees. I've killed 108 bees. 108 bees? Yeah. I have killed 86 bees and one creeper and one skeleton. So that's almost 200... Fuck down. There's a, there's a bee in the. I just, I just saw it fly past the window. Oh! Hopefully, that's gonna help my frame rate around here a little bit. It probably won't, but. I mean, there is a lot going on here. I'll be real. Yeah, there is. There is. Um. Anyway, we probably shouldn't stand in the middle of the road because. Um... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you need some like pavements around here. Nah, it's an industrial area. I didn't bother. It's fine. Right. I was like, we don't need no pavements. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll consider pavements. Now, what was I supposed to be doing? Oh, yes, animal harvesting. That was it. And I think I've got a fairly simple way we can do this utilizing Create, but it's not going to be pretty. So instead of talking my way through it as I work this out, I'm going to try and build up one module, and if it works, I'll show you what it's doing. If it doesn't, then I guess it's back to square one. And I think this should work just nicely. It's very straightforward. We've basically got a whole bunch of cows on the platform there. There's actually 24 there. And that means that any more that get born instantly get kind of pushed off the platform and they drop down here. And then when they grow up, they get killed by this punching hand with a stick. And it all happens around the side here. We've just got a deployer here that's taking wheat out of the main farmhouse, which is, of course, coming from our wheat field. And that deployer there is constantly trying to feed the animals. In fact, I should probably give that a filter just in case. And this is the poker at the bottom that has the stick. I did actually try giving that thing a sword, but when it had a sword, when these sort of smaller ones at the bottom here grow up, it was actually damaging the top ones as well as the one here. So, yeah, I just gave it a stick in the end, which does mean we're not going to get looting, but at least we're not going to kill the cows at the top and in regards to item collection i've just got a backpack here which has a filter to only pick up leather and raw beef but it's also got a tank so it can pick up all the experience which we're then pumping all the way around the top to the back of the barn and that's all going to get stored up in these tanks here and i have no idea what i'm going to do with that but for now we'll just store it oh there we go we just saw a baby get born look at that perfect but now we know that this works, I need to make a few more. We actually need one for pigs here. In fact, we need two for pigs because we want to be able to get hams as well, which means some of the pigs we're going to be killing with a knife. But that means we'll get pork chops as well as ham. We need one for sheep to get mutton. We need one for chicken so that we can get, well, chicken and feathers. And then we also need another chicken coop just for collecting eggs. But it's just going to be this same thing again and again, pretty much. So I'm just going to time lapse it, I think. See you in a minute.
managed to get all the farms in and the ones that have food are working a treat. As you can see, we've got lots of sheep there. We don't have any pigs though, sadly, either in there or over here because, well, I, I'm not actually automating carrots yet. As a temporary fix, we're going to go load up the system in just a moment. But I have also had to do these chambers slightly differently because the pigs are only one block high. I've actually stuck a trap door on the inside there as well. And that means the adults can't get out, but the babies can. And I've also had to stand them on a slab here and block them from going on top of the fence here. And this just means that when they're standing on the slab, they're babies, they won't get hit. But as soon as they grow up, the knife will take them down and we'll get ham. And this one's exactly the same, but once again, it has a stick and this will get us the pork chops. I then have a pretty standard chicken machine over here. The chickens are over there on hoppers. When they lay eggs, they go into a dispenser, which gets shot into this slab here. And basically, as you can see there, when the chickens grow up, that's when they die because they suffocate in this block here. And that, of course, gets us chicken and feathers. And then lastly, I just have a small coop here and this is where we're getting all of our eggs from. If we look around the back, I've actually got two of these systems here because this bag is big enough to pick up from both sides and this one does both of the pigs. And when it comes to the chickens, I've just got this one for collecting the eggs over there and the chicken from over there. And overall, it's working quite nicely. And this thing's only been running for a few hours, but we've already got way too much experience. So yeah, we're going to have to do something with that as well. But we'll figure out what to do with the XP later. For now, I need to fill up some drawers with some carrots. No, 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 no. Dang it. How did you get here? Don't tell me that's one of my scarecrows. It is. Oh, that's terrifying. Nope, you, sir, can go right back outside. I really don't need those kind of jump scares in my life. Jeez, I can only assume that was Stam. Anyway, so we're just going to load this up with a whole bunch of carrots. I'm sure 18,000 will keep the pigs busy for a while. But as for the rest of the meat, we're not doing too bad. We've got 430 chicken, 850 mutton. Wow, we've got a lot of beef. Not sure we need quite that much beef. But we've also got loads of leather and eggs and so on as well. So yeah, hopefully once the pigs start getting their carrots, that's going to catch up too. And in fact, while I'm here, I'm just going to spam all of these with many, many storage upgrades. So with that done, I guess the last thing we need is a magical transition to the barn being completed. It, it happened behind me, didn't it? But I guess the good news is at least the barn's done. And what a fancy transition that was too. But I've basically just messed up the floors a little bit in here. I've added lots of clutter and stuff because, well, it is a barn after all. Stuff's going to be stored in here. But there's nothing too exciting. Just a few bits of dirt and grass and a few bits of wood here and there. And what I've also done is sorted out the upstairs. In fact, I've even put some stairs in. But up here, once again, we've got a bit more storage and the hayloft is looking nice and full over this side. I think that's looking pretty good. And it looks a bit better from outside now as well we can see all the hay rammed up there. And the last thing I was going to do was just make an absolute buttload of glass bottles and just convert this into bottles of enchanting. But I seem to have misplaced my create backpack. I normally always have a second backpack in my inventory here and it's, it's just not there. I've gone looking for it and no, it's gone. Which is very annoying because that has literally all of my create items in it. So yeah, I think we're going to need to make a new one of those. But sadly, we're going to have to save that for another episode because we're out of time here. And don't forget the world download will be available for YouTube members and patrons at the end of this episode. And if you are enjoying the series, please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye now.